What up, what up, what up? We back here at TM in the AM. I'm your boy, Tori. I put the T in the TM. So, there was a lot going on over the weekend, especially the Saturday, last week, the day after I did my show last week. Uh, a lot of moves, free agency-wise. We'll get into those in the second hour. We'll have a whole hour for, of NBA for you. But we're going to kick off uh, the first hour with some football and a lot of baseball. As we know, the All-Star game is around the corner. Got to tell you about the All-Stars home run derby and list out the standings, you know, at the halfway point, really. But we're going to start off with some football. Let me see what we got here. Uh, some of the news. So, um, Jim Mora said that he ha will not go to Peyton Manning's statue unveiling in Indianapolis. <clears throat> this is nearly seven years later since Peyton Manning last suited up for the Colts. Uh, uh, but he's... Jim Moore is not going to go. Uh, well, people might not, uh, but Manning probably will be the best remembered in blue and white after being selected number one in 1998 draft by the Colts. What people not, might not remember is that Manning's first head coach was the fabled Jim Mora, better known as the playoff guy. So, this is Manning's first coach who's not going to his statue unveiling. Moore made himself famous for his epic playoff run playoff rant during the 2001 season this while Manning made himself prominent for everything that Rude followed Moore's tirade. That a beer the Colts slipped to a 6-10 and 10 season in 2001, resulting in Moore's rocky departure. Oh, let me see. I just got an update about something, what we'll talk about later. Um, Manning stayed another nine seasons in Indy, claiming Super Bowl XLI. I, I don't know Roman numerals past 10 or it's past 10, really. But, I, well, actually, I don't know what L means. But um, for the franchise, while breaking numerous passing records along the way, and though Peyton Man although Peyton Manning split with the Colts, wasn't smooth in two 2012, he'll soon be honored for his mastery in Indy. Let's be honest. When you think Peyton Manning, you think Indianapolis. You don't really think Den Denver, even though he did win his last Super Bowl in Denver. But when you think Peyton Manning, you think Indianapolis. Um, but Lucas Oil Stadium is often dubbed the house that Manning built, not the house that Moore built. Moore quarterly declined the invitation despite keeping close contact with Manning throughout the years. I had reasons, Moore told WNDE FM in Indianapolis on Wednesday. I love to come back there, but because of the way I left the Colts, my, relation my relationship with the former general manager, Bill Polian, I don't know. I just wouldn't feel that I would feel comfortable being there. And I told him this. I apologize for the fact I wouldn't come. I told him why I didn't feel like I should come. All those different things. I would love to come, but I think I would just feel a little bit awkward there. Breakups are never easy, and this one is particularly hard on Mora. While Manning's mold immortalizes him in Indianapolis lore, Mora will sit quietly at home wondering what could have been. So, at first I had to remind myself who Jim Mora was, but he's the playoffs dude. So, yeah, um... That kind of sucks that he's not going to be there to watch um, Peyton get his statue unveiled. But, I mean, it's ultimately his decision. And if he called Peyton and told him about it and said it, that he wasn't going to be there and why he couldn't be there, then I don't really got a problem with it, in my opinion. Um, let me see here what else. Um, Michael Bennett has recently come out. Uh, Seattle Seahawks' Michael Bennett has recently come out and said San Francisco 49ers defensive lineman DeForest Buckner will be an MVP, well, defensive MVP, by the end of it all. He said, I think DeForest, I'm lucky to be working with a guy like that, Bennett told him. P told told KHON-TV in Hawaii, I think DeForest... Order up one chicken palm. I think he has the talent to be able to do that. I keep telling him there's nobody like him. He's not normal. His physique, his speed, it's not normal. So when you're not normal... You can do not normal things, and winning defensive player, defensive MVP is not normal for most people. Buckner, the seventh overall pick in 2016, owns a freak combination of size, speed, and athleticism at six foot seven, 300 pounds. 
with a quick twitch to go along with impressive power. He's a rare specimen indeed. As a rookie, Buckner was the 49ers' top defensive lineman and often overworked. He took 1,067 snaps on defense and special teams, uh, an incredible sum for any lineman, let alone a first-year defender. San Francisco's new coaching staff plans to curtail that number with the hope Buckner is fresher this season. The switch to a 4-3 defense won't hurt Buckner, who, like Bennett, possesses the physical traits to play both inside and outside the line. The 49ers playmaker is taking Bennett's eventual defensive player of the year prediction as motivation. That's what gives me a lot of confidence, having a guy like him saying that I could be a potential MVP of the league one year. That means a lot, he said. It makes me want to grind harder. And when you give a football player, especially an NFL player, more motivation, they become an animal. Um, well, let me see what, what other news we got here. There's not much really going on in the NFL. Nothing really big that I've heard about. Um, I know that... Oh, excuse me. Uh, I know they released the top quarterbacks of 2000... Top 100 quarterbacks of 2017... Uh, and they gave number one, to, I'm going to take a wild guess, that's Tom Brady. Yeah, it is. But the top ten, top 15 quarterbacks that they listed out were 15 at Kirk Cousins. Uh, hold on, let me think here. Yeah, Alex Smith was top 100 ranking of 81. Kirk Cousins with a top 100 rating of 70. Marcus Mariota, top 100 rating of 50. Winston at 57. Stafford at 31, Prescott at 14, Cam Newton at 44, um, Phillip Rivers at 73, Derek Carr at 11, Russell Wilson at 24, Andrew Luck at 51, Matt Ryan at 10, Roethlisberger at 22, Drew Brees at 16, Rodgers at 10, and then Brady at 10. But, oh man, I don't really know what's going to happen this year in the NFL. I think the Patriots are going to repeat, in my opinion, especially after all the free agent things that they've done. Coney Ely, Brandon Cooks, uh, Rex Burkhead, Stephon Gilmore. I, I, I don't see anybody else beating them, especially with a good defense like that now. Um, their defense has always been good, but like... Adding... <sighs> excuse me. Adding two more defensive studs in uh, Gilmore and Coney Ely for basically nothing in keeping Malcolm Butler it's a it's a big deal uh, uh some stuff going on with Austin Safarian Jenkins but no one really cares about him anymore cuz Cameron Brate is the new tight end in um Tampa so and he's been doing fine let's see what else David Johnson has come out and said the pressure is on him to help Ryan Fitzpatrick and Carson Palmer win a championship. Oh, not Fitzpatrick. Oh, my gosh. I'm stupid. Ryan Fitzpatrick. I meant Larry Fitzgerald. I'm stupid. Oh, man. Um, yeah, there's really nothing else going on in the NFL, but sorry. I wish I could have more information for you guys about stuff going on, but honestly, there's just really nothing to talk about. But we'll be back here at Team and The next segment we'll be going over the All-Star Game and the Home Run Derby participants. You are listening to Team and the AM, the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreandair.com, the score. This is Bob McElligot, the radio voice of the Columbus Blue Jackets, and you're listening to the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com, the score. Nasty Sports Bar in Reynoldsburg is under new management. Located at 6150 East Main Street, the home for Taco Tuesday is rejuvenated and the home for great food and family fun. Nasty Sports Bar is a great place for happy hour, serving $2 domestics, $3 glasses of wine, and $5 appetizers, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Call 614-864-2827 to find out the daily specials. Nasties. Great food, family fun. 
with a cool name. Listen to scoreonair.com for your chance to win. Every Friday, we will be giving away a prize pack, and here's how you can qualify. Send us a message with your name, phone number, email, and date of birth to our Facebook or Twitter accounts. Just search Your Score On Air, or you can call or text any of our live shows at 614-641-0674 and tell them you want to win. It's that easy. A new winner will be selected every Friday at 7 p.m. This is your home for the new generation of sports talk radio and weekly prize giveaways. Scoreonair.com. The score. I'm Jake Safranco with your Sports Doc Minute. Brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Now here's the Sports Doc, Dr. Chris Stankovich. Does your son or daughter struggle with nerves when it comes to competing in sports? If so, it's important to know that this is perfectly normal. In fact, professional athletes struggle with the very same anxieties that your son or daughter does while competing. Nerves are a result largely because of cognitive appraisals. And what that means is how we perceive things often dictates how our bodies will respond. You might want to think of this as fight or flight. In fact, when I work with athletes, I ask them, do they view pressure situations as challenges or do they see them as threats? If they view them as challenges, they often gain confidence, sharpen their focus, and become even more motivated to succeed. But if they see the situation as threatening, that's when anxiety creeps in and usually compounds matters. So it's important that you look at skills that can help, including deep breathing, using imagery, and reminding your child of the importance of positive self-talk. This has been your Sports Doc Minute, brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Enrolling now, visit B onair.com. Are you a sports fan looking to expand your sports memorabilia collection? Well, First and Goal has you covered better than the Ohio State Secondary. First and Goal is your number one place to find all the sports collectibles of your dreams. We are located at Polaris Fashion Place in Columbus and the mall at Fairfield Commons of Beaver Creek. Stop on in and you'll find autographed jerseys, helmets, photographs, and much more that will make you the envy of the neighborhood. Feel free to give us a call at 614-896-1016 for our store at Polaris or call us at 937 937- 427 4737 and Beaver Creek. For all your sports collectibles and more, it's first and goal. Matty Ice here, proud alum of the Ohio Media School. Are you looking for a new career, not just a job, but a fulfilling career? If you want to work in media, radio, television, sports broadcasting, or film and video production, you need to check out the Ohio Media School's Columbus campus today. Their updated radio and television broadcasting program will even have you ready to work in a field you'll love in just eight months. Stop by the Ohio Media School's audio and video studios today to see it for yourself. Visit BeOnAir.com. That's BeOnAir.com. You like talking Buckeyes? Yes! Oh my God! So do we. Just not all the time. We're home for the largest variety of sports talk. Largest variety of sports talk. This is the new generation of sports talk radio. New generation of sports talk radio. Schoolonair.com. The school. The school. Are you someone who has always dreamed of a career in sports media? The Ohio Media School now offers a six-month sports emphasis program to prepare you for a whole new career. Whether it's radio or television, play-by-play or production, the Ohio Media School has you covered. You will receive training from professionals that are actually in the industry. The Ohio Media School will get you where you need to be for a successful career in this exciting, expanding field. To schedule a visit, call 614-655-5250 or go to beonair.com. Stop dreaming about a career in sports and make it a reality at the Ohio Media School. The new generation of sports talk radio. Here's your score on air.com score center update. Gordon Hayward made his decision to leave the Utah Jazz final yesterday, announcing that he will sign with the Boston Celtics. The small forward will sign a four-year deal of $128 million with a player option in the final year. Hayward confirmed his intent to sign in a piece he wrote for the Players' Tribune. Cleveland Indians dropped the San Diego Padres 1-0 yesterday at Progressive Field. Corey Kluber set a club record with 10 strikeouts in eight innings, making him the only tribe pitcher to strike out 10 or more batters in five consecutive games. However, the offense couldn't give him the support he needed, so he took the loss, making him 7-3 on the season. The tribe will face the Padres again tonight in Cleveland. Trevor Bauer is on the mound for the Indians. First pitch is at 710. Watch that game on Sports Time Ohio. And Joey Chestnut won the annual Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest on Coney Island yesterday. Chestnut set a record by scarfing 72 dogs with buns in 10 minutes to capture his 10th mustard belt in the last 11 years. His performance was impressive, and he credits that to his training. I have to treat competitive eating like a sport. It's not just going to a buffet. I'm not a buffet buster. I, I train. I, I fast. I, I really take my practices and try to figure out how to improve. Yeah, I, I, I make my body work for me, and I, I've been really lucky with uh, how, how it's performed. 
This has been Monger Squiz with your Score Center update for July 5th, 2017. For all the latest news, scores, and updates, keep it locked right here on scoreonair.com. You're listening to the home of the latest sports news and updates in Columbus. Streaming live on YouTube and the worldwide TuneIn Radio app. This is scoreonair.com. Scoreonair.com. <laughs> What up, what up, what up? We back here at Team in the AM. I'm your boy Tori. I put the T in the TM. So we're going to discuss the All-Star Game and the Home Run Derby. Let's start off with the Derby first. Uh, the seeding came out along with the, um, I think I just exited out of the seeding. Uh, I'll open that back up real quick. But there's been there were some questionable decisions for the Home Run Derby. One that definitely sticks out to me was someone who shouldn't be there, in my opinion. He doesn't have that many dingers at all, really. But he's a teammate of someone who has a lot of dingers. So, let's see what we can find here. Um, It's going to play. There's somebody who, in my mind who's missing from this derby. And I believe that he should be very upset uh, he's already come out and said that he's pretty pretty angry about what has been going on with the home run derby and stuff like that. I have no idea who the American League captain was, but I know Stanton was the National League. But So here's your eight guys who are going to the home run derby. Uh, for your first hitter, you got Aaron Judge. Uh, I don't know how long ago this article was posted, but at the time he had 27 home runs. I think he has 29 now or 30. I'm not sure. Uh, Dodgers left fielder Cody Bellinger. Uh, He's been kind of like their Yasiel Puig this year. Uh, Next would be Kansas City third baseman Mike Moustakis, who has 22 on the year. Uh, Giancarlo Stanton, who has 21. As we all know, he'll be going for his repeat. Uh, next would be Miguel Sano, Minnesota's third baseman. He's got 20. Uh, Colorado center fielder Charlie Blackman. Kind of questionable decision there. Not sure why he's there, but I didn't know he was that good of a power hitter. And then Miami will have a second guy there with him, Justin Bohr, who has 18. And then here's my questionable decision, Gary Sanchez, who has 13. And you know who the who's pretty upset about it? Logan Morrison of... The Tampa Bay Rays. He came out and said that he doesn't deserve to be there. Sanchez is a great player and all, but he's not a home run hitter. And Logan Morrison said, I remember when I hit my 13th home run. That was about a month and a half ago. He has like 24 now or so, and he didn't get he didn't get to be in it. So he's a little upset about that, and I just exited out of the seating again. So give me a hot second. But those are your home run derby participants. Uh, it should be a good one. I, def- I definitely think... Um, Stan, uh, I definitely think Stanton will have some competition this year, especially with Aaron Judge and um, uh, St- um, Cody Bellinger. So it'll be Stanton versus Gary Sanchez. Really? Come on. Like, that's not even fair. We all know Stanton's probably going to win that match. Um, Mike Moustakis and Miguel Sano, a battle of AL Central third baseman right there. It sure is beautiful. Aaron Judge versus Dad, Justin Bond. We're on vacation. That's a pretty good matchup right there. And then you got Cody Bellinger versus Charlie Blackman. So those are your seedings right there. My prediction that in the finals it will be, well, the final four will be Stanton, uh, Sano, Bellinger, and Judge. And then it will be Judge and Stanton. And I, I, would ha- I can't tell you right now who I think will win the championship of that. But it will be a good home run derby to watch. I love the home run derby. Uh, now here's your American League starters for the All-Star game. At first base, you got uh, Toronto Blue Jay, Justin Smoke, his first All-Star appearance, and his fir- and the first Blue Jay first baseman to start since Carlos Delgado. Uh, second base, you got Jose Altuve. He's This is his fifth All-Star appearance, uh, his fourth in a row, actually. Uh, with this All-Star appearance, Altuve will tie Lance Berkman for the second most All-Star appearances in franchise history, Craig Biggio made seven, so he's first. At shortstop, you got Houston Astro, Carlos Correa, his first appearance. 
Correa at 22 will be the second player in Astros history to start an All-Star game birth before his 23rd birthday. Cesar Cedeno started in 1973 at age 22. He'll be the first Astros player to start at shortstop. Uh, third base, one of my guys, Cleveland Indian Jose Ramirez, his first All-Star appearance. I can't wait till the league figures out who this man is. This guy's got the swagger. He's got the strut. I cannot wait to see him in Miami. Ramirez will be the Indians' third baseman for the start. Will be the first Indians third baseman to start the All Star game since Travis Fryman in 2000. Ramirez will be the fourth Indians player to start an All Star game before his 25th birthday. The other three are Sandy Alomar in 1990, Lou Boudreau in 1942, and Bob Feller in 1941. And catcher, who else but Kansas City Royals catcher Salvi Perez. Uh, this is his fifth All Star appearance. This will be his fourth straight star as a catcher, making him the first AL catcher to start four consecutive All-Star games since Pudge Rodriguez. All other Royals catchers have combined for one All-Star game, and that was Daryl Porter in 1979. Perez and George Brett are the only Royals, are the only Royals players to start con consecutive All-Star games. You get your outfield. Uh, let's start off with obviously one of the notables, Aaron Judge of the New York Yankees. He'll be playing right field. His first appearance. He'll be the first Yankees outfielder to start since Curtis Granderson in 12. Judge also will be the first Yankees player to start before age 26 since Willie Randolph did so at 23 in 1977. He'll be the first Yankee rookie position player to make the All-Star game since Hideki Matsui in 2003. You got your center fielder who replaced Mike Trout actually won the vote for center field but he's hurt so Mookie Betts will take over at center field the Boston Red Sox center fielder. This is uh, his second all straight All-Star appearance. Betts replaced Mike Trout with his th after his thumb injury as a starter for the American League. This will be his second straight, as I already said. Uh, and then we got left field, Houston Astros, George, Houston Astros outfielder George Springer. This will be his first All-Star appearance. Springer will be the third Astros player to start in the outfielder, joining Berkman in 2004 and Cesar Cedeno in 73. And designated hitter, Tampa Bay Ray, Corey Dickerson. His first All-Star appearance, Dickerson will be the fourth Rays player to start in an All-Star game. The previous three were David Price, Carl Crawford, and Evan Longoria in 2010. Here's your pitching staff for the AL. You got Chris Sale from Boston, Dallas Keuchel from Houston, Irvin Santana in Minnesota, Jason Vargas in Kansas City, Luis Severino from New York, Hugh Darvish in Texas, Michael Fulmer in Detroit, Corey Kluber, in Cleveland, Lance McCullers in Houston, Craig Kimbrell from Boston, Andrew Miller in Cleveland, and Dylan Batances from New York. So they got some good pitching in the AL this year. And your reserves, Gary Sanchez is your backup catcher for the Yan from the Yankees. Yonder Alonso is your backup first baseman from Oakland. Uh, your backup second baseman is Starlin Castro from New York. And you have another backup second baseman and Jonathan Scope for Baltimore. Your two third basemen are Miguel Sano from Minnesota and Moustakas from Kansas City. Uh, your backup shortstop is Francisco Lindor from Cleveland. Your two backup outfielders are Avisayo Garcia from the Chicago White Sox and Michael Brantley from the Indians. And your backup DH is Nelson Cruz from Seattle. Now on to the NL. Ryan Zimmerman will start at first base. He's His la first all-star appearance since 2009, he'll be a first start. He'll be the first National Expos player to start first baseman since Al Oliver in 1983. Second baseman, you got Daniel Murphy. Uh, he's, this is his third All-Star appearance. Eight different NL second basemen have started the All-Star game in the past eight seasons. Before that, Chase Utley started four straight. Your shortstop is Zach Cozart. This is his first, first All-Star appearance. Cozart will be the first Reds player to start shortstop since Hall of Famer Barry Larkin in 2000. Third base, you got Nolan Arenado, who's basically taking the league by storm in Colorado. Uh, this is his third straight All-Star appearance. Arenado will be the second Rockies third baseman to start an All-Star game since Vinny Castilla started in 1995. At catcher, you got Buster Posey. This is his third straight All-Star appearance, fifth total. Uh, this will be a fourth start, giving him the franchise record for the most starts by a catcher. Uh, Willie Mays has 17, Barry Bonds has 11, Cepeda has 6, Johnny Mize has 5. Will Clark at four, Mel Ott at four, and Willie McCovey at four are the Giants players with at least four All-Star game starts. He'll be the first catcher to make three straight starts since Hall of Famer Mike Piazza made six from 94 to 99. And did it not give a third baseman? Oh, yeah, it did give it. Uh, your outfield, uh, Bryce Harper from the Nationals, obviously. 
this is his fourth All Star appearance. Harper will take the sole possession of the franchise record for most All Star starts by an outfield outfielder. Uh, your starting center fielder, uh, Charlie Blackman. This will be his second All Star appearance. Blackman will join Carlos Gonzalez, Matt Holliday, Larry Walker, and Dante Bichette as the only Rockies to start in the outfield. And your last outfielder is Marcelo Zuna from the Miami Marlins. This is his second straight All Star appearance. This will be. He is the only Marlins player to start an All Star game in the outfield. Uh, NL pitchers look like this: Clayton Kershaw from the Dodgers, Max Scherzer from the Nationals, Robbie Ray from the Diamondbacks, Zach Greinke from the Diamondbacks, Carlos Martinez from the Cardinals, Steven Strasburg from Watt from the Nationals, Kenley Jansen from the Dodgers, Greg Holland from the Rockies, Wade Davis from the Cubs, Brad Hand from the Padres, Corey Nebel from Milwaukee, and Pat Neshek from Philadelphia. Your backups. Catcher, your backup catcher is Yadier Molina from the Cardinals. First, ba your two first basemen are Paul Goldschmidt and Joey Votto. Your two second basemen are DJ LeMahieu and Josh Harrison. Your two third basemen are Jake Lamb and Justin Turner. Your backup shortstops Corey Seager, and your backup outfielders are Cody Bellinger, Giancarlo Stanton, Michael Conforto, and Ender Inciarte. So, this will be interesting. But how about the Cubs only getting one All Star? after winning the World Series. And that all-star wasn't even on the team last year in Wade Davis. And the runner-up's getting five. Uh, but prayers go out to my man, Tito Francona. Hope he gets better so he can coach in Miami. I would really love to see him down there coaching the boys. But those are your all-stars, in my opinion. I think the, uh, the AL has a lot more firepower than the um, NL right now. But we'll have to wait and see. That game will be happening at on Tuesday, I believe. But we'll be right back here at TM and AM. We're going to talk about <clears throat> standings. We're going to discuss what's been going on at the halfway point. So you're listening to TM and AM, the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com. The score will be right back after this break. Broadcasting from the Score On Air studios at the Ohio Media School in Columbus, Ohio. Your home. Your home. All the latest sports news and talk. ScoreOnAir.com. The Score. Are you a sports fan? Do you have a mobile phone? Great. That's all you need to stay up to date with ScoreOnAir.com, the new generation of sports talk radio, with original talk shows starting every two hours, covering every sport from every angle. From basketball. To hockey. To martial arts. We cover all Ohio sports. We cover all Ohio sports. Just go to scoreonair.com or download the TuneIn Radio app and search Score On Air. You'll be part of the action in no time. Whether you're stuck in traffic, at the grocery store, studying at the library, anywhere for that matter. Anywhere for that matter. Tune in anytime to get your sports fix. Follow us on social media or go to scoreonair.com for even more original content, including play by play of local high school and college games, sports articles, and podcasts. Scoreonair.com is your home for the best analysis, coverage, and lukewarm sports takes. The best part, we're broadcasting live right here in Columbus. Oh, wait. Oh, yo. Scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio. The score. The score. You didn't know? NWA Midwest Championship Wrestling is looking for interns. Have you heard of Ric Flair? Well, this is the company that brought you Ric Flair before he went to the WWE. And we're looking for interns to work behind the scenes, hand in hand, with production, with audio, with video, and with podcasts and radio. Contact Damon Dury, the big dog, at 740-971-3968. The Be On Air Network, bringing you the best of the best in internet radio from across the country. From Miami to Denver to Chicago and Cleveland, you'll hear all the top shows from all of our college stations. For more information on The Ohio Media School, go to BeOnAir.com. Be On Air Network, bringing you the best college radio has to offer. Are you someone who has always dreamed of a career in sports media? The Ohio Media School now offers a six-month sports emphasis program to prepare you for a whole new career. Whether it's radio or television, play-by-play or production, the Ohio Media School has you covered. You will receive training from professionals that are actually in the industry. The Ohio Media School will get you where you need to be for a successful career in this exciting, expanding field. To schedule a visit, call 614-655-5250 or go to beonair.com. Stop dreaming about a career in sports and make it a reality at the Ohio Media School. 
Broadcasting from the Score On Air studios at the Ohio Media School in Columbus, Ohio. Your home. Your home. For all the latest sports news and talk, scoreonair.com. The Score. What up, what up, what up? We're back here at Team in the AM. I'm your boy, Tori. I put the T in the TM. So we're going to be discussing the standings, but before we do that, I just got an update. It's a Terry Francona just had heart surgery. He will miss the All-Star game, sadly, but he expects to rejoin the team after. So thoughts and prayers out to Tito. Hope the heart surgery went well. Can't wait to see you back in our dugout coaching my boys. But anyway... We're going to discuss the standings. In the, NL, in the AL East, it looks like Boston, New York, Tampa, Baltimore, and Toronto. So Boston's got a three-and-a-half game lead on New York, who hasn't been playing the best baseball right now. They're playing really bad on the road kind of this year. But in my opinion, this, this, this could get interesting because the Yankees have a really good young offense. Their pitching isn't ba- really that bad either. I mean, CC Pineda... Tanako, T- Tanako, Tanaka, Severino, and um, so I, I can't remember the other guy. But, um, yeah, he, they've got a pretty decent pitching staff, and obviously we know what their offense can do. they got the steal of free agency, basically, and Matt Holliday. Can't, they need him to come back. That'll probably help. But they got good bats in Gregorius, Castro, Judge, obviously, uh, Gary Sanchez. Um, but right now Boston's just playing – um, playing really well. Uh, Chris Sale, I know, just became the first pitcher ever to have 170 strikeouts before the All-Star break. So that's kind of a big deal. Him and David Price have been pretty good together, along with Rick Porcello. And I don't know if Henry Owens is still starting or not. I'd have to double-check that. But overall, I think Boston will win this division. And Yankees will be the first or the second seed in the wild card. Uh, Tampa, I don't really see them doing anything they got a nice young offense and they got built around Dickerson and they they got Logan Morrison for a good steal um I know they got Wilson Ramos this past free agency he's a pretty good young catcher uh but this isn't back in the day when you had when you were building around young third baseman Evan Longoria this isn't the now you don't have Carlos Pena anymore you don't have uh Deion Navarro you don't have all those guys so you gotta start building around Mr. Corey Dickerson now and Kevin Kiermeyer too. But on to the AL Central. Cleveland. Uh it goes Cleveland, Kansas City, Minnesota, Detroit, and Chicago. As we all know that this is probably the most tightly compacted division every year in the AL. Uh Cleveland has a one game lead over Kansas City. I really don't think Kansas City is gonna be in the wild card, even though right now they are. I don't think that'll i I don't think that'll stay in my opinion. I don't think that'll stay the same. Uh, Cleveland, well, I think, will definitely win the division. But the wild card, I think, will go to the Minnesota Twins uh, because they have performed all year. Uh, they got the better bats and they got the better pitching. They really got a stud in Jose Barreos. Uh, Irvin Santana has pitched really well back onto the all-star team, apparently. And um, overall, Miguel Sano, Brian Dozier, Max Kepler. I hate Max Kepler. But those guys will probably lead them lead the way. Uh, Kansas City isn't the old team that they used to be. Any they don't really have all the uh, bats and pitching that they used to. I mean, I know Jason Vargas is an All Star, but I don't really like their staff. I don't trust their staff really at all. And obviously, Chicago is down the cellar in Detroit. I really don't know what's happened to them. They really just screwed themselves with how much money they spent on free agents. But on to the AL West. Uh, Houston, they're 30 games over 500. I think they're obviously going to run away with this division. They have a 15 and a half game lead on the Angels, and they, the Angels aren't even in the wild card. Uh, Houston, I definitely feel like could go far in the playoffs because, again, their pitching is really solid and their hitting is really solid. George Springer, Jose Altuve, Carlos Correa, and then you got the veterans. To, you get the veterans with playoff experience to help lead them, and Be- Carlos Beltran and Brian McCann. So that will help a lot. And they're pitching. Dallas Keuchel has pitched out of his mind this year. I don't know who's starting in the All-Star game, but I, th- I think he should. 
Uh, so overall, Houston will obviously win this. If you think otherwise, I really don't know what you're paying attention to. But on to the NL. The NL East looks like the Nationals, Braves, Mets, Marlins, Phillies. Uh, the Nationals have an eight and a half game lead on the Braves, and the Braves are under 500. So the Nationals, they kind of they they're kind of iffy with me because I love the rotation of Max Scherzer, Strasburg. Uh, um, Gio Gonzalez, Rourke, those guys are solid. Like their pitching is nice, but they don't show up in the playoffs. Their offense doesn't really. They're getting a great year from Ryan Zimmerman, uh, obviously Bryce Harper, uh, Anthony Rendon has been playing out of his mind this year. But there's just something weird about this team that I'm. I feel like they're gonna choke again. They never make it far, but they will overall win this division. And the Braves, they don't even have a wild card spot, so. The wild card will not be coming out of this division. Uh, in the NL Central, we got Milwaukee, Chicago, St. Louis, Pittsburgh, and Cincinnati. Um, Milwaukee surprising everybody. I did get an update on the way here that Milwaukee is prepared to go after, I believe it was Sonny Gray and Jose Quintana, which would really help bolster their pitch- pitching staff. Sonny Gray is... I've been saying get Sonny Gray out of Oakland for a while now because I feel so bad for him. And Jose Quintana is a really good left-hander who shouldn't be stuck in Chicago. But how about the speaking of Chicago, how about those Cubs? Four and a half games back and six and a half with a wild card. They're 19-25 and 25 on the road. They're, I know Joe Madden's plan was to put Rizzo at the top of the lineup to help their hitting. It worked for a little bit, but it, does, it can't work when you don't have good pitching. Um... I know they have Lester, they have Lackey. I think I think they still have Lackey. That's something I'd have to double check. Uh their bullpen they, they, their bullpen isn't that bad. I mean, they only lost Chapman and um they got Wade Davis, so who's an all-star, but I don't know. It's weird. Uh they, but if they're not careful, they're not even going to make the playoffs. Uh but the NL West, the Dodgers are leading by five and a half. But I believe both wild. Uh, it's, uh, sorry, it goes like Dodgers, Diamondbacks, Rockies, Padres, Giants. But I believe that both wild card spots for the NL will come out of the West. The NL is just the NL West is just too good this year. The Dodgers are just playing have been playing out of their mind. They're pitching great with uh, Alex Wood, Clayton Kershaw. Those guys, they're outstanding. The Diamondbacks, I love their pitching too, especially their young offense. Zach Greinke, the pitching of Robbie Ray, Zach Greinke, Patrick Corbin, those guys, are, I, I really like them. And Jake Lamb, who's one of my, he's low-key one of my underrated guys in the entire league because he just goes out there and does his thing. Obviously, you got Paul Goldschmidt. Who else is on the Diamondbacks? you got A.J. Pollock. Those guys, hopefully they can make a good run in the playoffs. And then you got the Rockies, who are a huge, like, you don't you, like a huge question mark, kinda, because their offense is good, but their pitching is eh. I know they got Jonathan Gray and those guys on the mound, but I'm more confident in their offense and pitching with Nolan Arenado, Carlos Gonzalez, uh, who else? Charlie Blackman and Trevor Story, Ian Desmond, DJ LeMahieu. They got a pretty good offense, and they really got a steal in Mark Reynolds. I, I know as a Cleveland fan, when you get Mark Reynolds on your team, it's fun to watch him play with all the home runs that he hits and the long home runs that he hits. So it'll be interesting. But overall, I don't really see anything changing in any di- in any division, really, AL or NL. I think the only division that will really change... That will really change... Excuse me, I just had to yawn there. That will really change is the AL East, potentially, and obviously maybe the AL Central. I think second and third place for the AL Central will swap and Minnesota will make the wild card. But overall, I think it'll be Boston, Cleveland, Houston with your two wild cards, Minnesota and New York. And then the NL, Washington, Milwaukee, LA with your two wild cards of Arizona and Colorado. My predict my predictions may change throughout the year. We'll have to wait to see after the All Star break what happens because we're starting to get to the dog days of summer. And then once we hit September we'll really know what's up. But when we come back here, we'll discuss this weekend's series and pitching matchups for tonight. You're listening to Team in the AM, the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com, the score. This is 
is Bob McElligot, the radio voice of the Columbus Blue Jackets, and you're listening to the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com, the score. Hey guys, Matty Ice here, proud alum of the Ohio Media School. Get the training you need to get a job you will love. The Ohio Media School has classes in radio, television, sports broadcasting, and film and video production. Visit BeOnAir.com today to get started. That's BeOnAir.com. What's good, big game, James? How you feeling, D.O. Jr.? My guy, I'm super excited. High school sports is starting back, man. Man, I'm even more excited because we got this new show starting. Tell the people what we're doing, D.O. Jr. Man, we starting the Central Ohio High School Showcase, the C-O-H-S-S. That's that's right. We're covering football, basketball, baseball, soccer, volleyball, and track and field. If it's in season, we on it. Hey, you know we do this for the kids, man. You can listen live by going to scoreonair.com via the TuneIn app or watch us streaming live by going to the Score On Air YouTube channel. The C-O-H-S-S. Giving you nothing less. Showcasing Central Ohio's best. I'm Jake Safranco with your Sports Doc Minute. Brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Now here's the Sports Doc, Dr. Chris Stankovich. When we think of athletes like Derek Jeter, Kobe Bryant, or Tom Brady, often the first word that comes to mind is clutch. These are the types of athletes who seem to perform their best when the pressure is on. Did you know that clutch athletes aren't necessarily born that way? But what separates them from the competition is that clutch players are not afraid to fail. That's the biggest difference. In fact, they want the ball when the game is on the line. You know, in order to really solidify this point, you might want to go back to an old Michael Jordan commercial where he talked about not how many shots he made when the game was on the line, but how many times he missed. So it's important that we note, in order to perform our best in clutch situations, we have to want the ball in those situations, and we cannot be afraid to fail. Otherwise, we will fail in clutch situations. This has been your Sports Doc Minute, brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Enrolling now, visit beonair.com. The score wants to make you, yeah, you, a winner. Each week, scoreonair.com is giving away a prize pack that'll knock your socks off. Ouch, hey, that hurt. How? First of all, like us on Facebook. And every Monday, we will pin up a post to the top of our feed, updating you on what the week's prize and contest details are. Now here, take your socks back. A winner will be selected every week at 7 p.m. Friday on our combat sports show, Tyson's Punch-Out. So give us a call or text to get qualified. This is your home for the new generation of sports talk radio and weekly prize giveaways. Here's how to qualify. Message us on Facebook at Your Score On Air or Twitter. Also, at Your Score On Air with your name, phone number, email, and date of birth. Or you could just simply call or text any of our live shows at 614-641-0674 and tell them you want to qualify to win t-shirts, sporting memorabilia, and more. This is your home for the new generation of Sports Talk Radio and weekly prize giveaways. Scoreonair.com. The score. Tuesdays from 12 to 2 p.m. It's the Beermonger Sports Sessions on scoreonair.com. The new generation of sports talk radio, The Score. And it's not your regular sports show. You're listening to scoreonair.com. The new generation of sports talk radio in Columbus. Online sports radio, WSOA, scoreonair.com. The Score. We back here at TM in the AM. I'm your boy Tori. I put the T in the TM. So, uh, bef- we're going to discuss these pitching matchups for the weekend and the series. But first, if you want to call or text and got any sports questions for me, call in at 614 641 0674. That is 614 641 0674. I would really love to hear what you guys have to say or what you guys want to ask me so I can give you my best thoughts about it. But we're going to discuss these pitching matchups. For the day here, it, today is July 7th. Hope everybody had a great 4th of July weekend. Um, I hope everybody stayed safe as well. But the Pirates and Cubs will kick it off at 7.05 tonight. They'll have Will- Pirates will have Williams versus Butler and the Cubs. Uh, give me give me the Cubs in this, ge- in this series. Obviously, the Pirates aren't very good. They haven't been for the last couple of years. The Cubs aren't very good either this year, but I think the Cubs will prevail in this series. <clears throat> oh, sorry, that game's at 2.20 today. My apologies. <clears throat> Not sure why the games are so early today. Wow. Um, 
But this game is at 635, Padres and Phillies. Clayton Richard versus Pavita for the Phillies. Uh, this is no one really the winner of this game is nobody and the loser is the audience. Why would you wanna why would you wanna watch this game? This game is just abysmal. And but I'll take the Padres in this game. Uh Braves and Nationals. You got R. A. Dickey versus Max Scherzer. Let's be honest, who do you think's gonna win? Max Scherzer has a one point nine four ERA. The Nationals are definitely gonna take this one. And there's really no doubt in my mind that R.A. Dickey has lost everything that he had for that one Cy Young award year that he had. Uh, I don't really don't know what this guy's name is, but I hope I can figure it out. I know this is Junior, uh, but it's the 705 first pitch for the Brewers and Yankees. You got Junior Guerra uh, versus Jay Montgomery for the uh, Yankees. I really wish I knew his last name, um, his first name. But I'll take the Yankees in that series. <clears throat> Next, for the Astros and Blue Jays, you got Charlie Morton going up against Aaron Sanchez. Aaron Sanchez, I think he hasn't pitched at all really this year, I don't think. He's 0-1, but I'll take the Astros in this one. They're 30 games over 500. Their pitching is amazing, and their their offense is even better. Uh, Red Sox and Rays, a little divisional matchup in the East. Drew Pomeranz for the Red Sox and Jake Odorizzi for the Re for the Rays. I'm gonna take the Red Sox in this one. I really I I know what Pomeranz can do from him being in the Cleveland uh, farm systems for so long. So expect him to take this one easily. An AL Central matchup at 7:10. You got the Tigers and Indians. They start a three gamer tonight in Cleveland. Jordan Zimmerman versus Carlos Carrasco. Carrasco I believe is an All Star snub. Uh, if you want to argue about that, you know the number to call in. But I'll take the Indians in a sweep because the Tigers have just struggled against the Indians the past couple years. At 8.05, the Angels and the Rangers will be going against each other in an AL West showdown. Ricky Nolasco versus Cole Hamels. Cole Hamels is only 3-0, and but that's because his team just can never really give him any offense when he starts. Um. So, yeah, honestly, that's about it. Uh, the next will be the next matchup will be at eight ten Orioles and Twins, Kevin Gosman, and then literally all it says here is Jorge. It doesn't give me a first name. All it says is Jorge. So I'm assuming the Twins just called up somebody to make this start. So give me the Orioles in this one. Uh, Mets and Cardinals at eight fifteen. You got Jacob Degrom versus Carlos Martinez. That's a good pitching matchup if you like pitching and low runs. But give me the Cardinals. Actually, no, give me the Mets in this game. Uh, DeGrom at 8-3 with a 3.55 ERA. Martinez may have a lower ERA, but his team doesn't really score for him. White Sox and Rockies at 840. You get Derek Holland going against Marquez. Uh, give me Derek Holland. Actually, no, give me the Rockies because the White Sox, they suck. That's really my reasoning. Uh, 940, the Reds and Diamondbacks. You got Adelman for the Reds going against Zach Greinke. Well, let's be honest. Give me Zach Greinke. There's no way the Reds are going to beat this guy. He's 10-4 with a 3.05 ERA, and he's just overall one of the best pitchers in the NL, in the league, as a matter of fact. Royals and Dodgers at 10-10. Jason, Ham Jason Hamill versus Kenta Maeda. Give me Kenta Maeda and the Dodgers to win this series. I really like the Dodgers pitching and their offense a lot better than <coughs> um, the Royals pitching and offense plus Jason Hamill is kind of bad so and then second to last series we're going to talk about here athletics and Mariners at 10 10 you got Shaw Manaya versus John I think it's um I think it's John Paxton Paxton uh but uh, give me uh give me the Mariners in this one I like Paxton and I really like the uh Mariners they I'm still mad that they're not winning a lot of games because I had them being my dark horse this year, but they're just really underperforming. They're five games under 500. Um, but last but not least, at 10:15, it'll be Marlins and Giants. Dan Straley versus Matt Moore. Uh, give me the Marlins. This this year for the Giants just hasn't been good at all. I hear they're shopping Mad Bum Madison Bumgarner, um, Hunter Pence. They're, the only people they're not shopping, I hear, is Brandon Crawford and 
um, Buster Posey. Funny story about Madison Bumgarner. Uh, one of my friends who used to go to the school with me, Brian Merriman, he went to West Jefferson High School, and one of his alumni, one of West Jeff's alumni, pitches for the Dodgers farms team, one of the Dodgers farm team, and he sent me a picture last night and said, look at this, look who my, one of my pals is pitching against tonight. And he had to pitch against Madison Bumgarner and I think like double A or something. And he won. So shout out to that kid who beat Madison Bumgarner. I know Madison I know I know Bum gave up like nine runs that in that game too. So great win for that kid. Hope his confidence skyrockets after that. But let's see if there's any other news and notes around going on around the MLB besides Terry Francona going through his heart procedure. Really sucks to hear that. Um, let's see what else. Um, I really hope this home run derby is as good as it as good as it looks because there's some years where you got some cl- guys who want who can club the ball in and they just suck. I can't remember who was that guy who can't who was a right-handed hitter. I think it was when the All Star game was in Kansas City. He had a ton of home runs, but when it came to the derby, he didn't hit. And I think it was Jose Batista. He did, he hit like two, and he was going against Mark Trumbo, and Mark Trumbo blew him out of the water. But overall, I'm really excited for this All Star game. It should be one of the better ones, especially in Miami. So there's going to be the players will have a lot of fun. Uh, they got to make it as fun as they can because some maybe their first and only All Star game. But. We'll be back here at Team in the AM after this quick break, and it's going to be this next whole hour is going to be about NBA, and I cannot wait to talk about it. So you're listening to Team in the AM, the new generation of sports talk radio, scorenair.com, the score. Broadcasting from the Score On Air studios at the Ohio Media School in Columbus, Ohio. Your home. Your home. For all the latest sports news and talk, scoreonair.com. The Score. The Be On Air Network, bringing you the best of the best in internet radio from across the country. From Miami to Denver to Chicago and Cleveland. You'll hear all the top shows from all of our college stations. For more information on the Ohio Media School, go to beonair.com. Be On Air Network, bringing you the best college radio has to offer. Are you a sports fan? Do you have a mobile phone? Great, that's all you need to stay up to date with ScoreOnAir.com, the new generation of sports talk radio, with original talk shows starting every two hours, covering every sport from every angle. From basketball. To hockey. To martial arts. We cover all Ohio sports. We cover all Ohio sports. Just go to scoreonair.com or download the TuneIn Radio app and search Score On Air. You'll be part of the action in no time. Whether you're stuck in traffic, at the grocery store, studying at the library, anywhere for that matter, anywhere for that matter, tune in anytime to get your sports fix. Follow us on social media or go to scoreonair.com for even more original content, including play by play of local high school and college games, sports articles, and podcasts. Scoreonair.com is your home for the best analysis, coverage, and lukewarm sports takes. The best part, we're broadcasting live right here in Columbus. Oh, wait. Oh, yo. Scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio. The score. In a small village in Romania, after the eighth grade, students desiring to attend high school must pay their own way for transportation. From the village of Mochu to Cluj to Apahida, it costs 350 American dollars per year per child for the bus ride of over one hour each way. With your help, eight Roma children will be able to accomplish something their parents and grandparents could not do. Most of their parents have not received an elementary education. This year, three boys and five girls can have that chance to attend high school. Will you help? Please make a donation of whatever you can to help these eight children get their high school education. Make your donations payable to Worthington Presbyterian Church, 773 North High Street, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. And add on the memo line, bus transportation. Your donation will make a dream become. 
become a reality. Are you someone who has always dreamed of a career in sports media? The Ohio Media School now offers a six-month sports emphasis program to prepare you for a whole new career. Whether it's radio or television, play-by-play or production, the Ohio Media School has you covered. You will receive training from professionals that are actually in the industry. The Ohio Media School will get you where you need to be for a successful career in this exciting, expanding field. To schedule a visit, call 614-655-5250 or go to beonair.com. Stop dreaming about a career in sports and make it a reality at the Ohio Media School. The new generation of sports talk radio. Here's your score on air.com score center update. Gordon Hayward made his decision to leave the Utah Jazz final yesterday, announcing that he will sign with the Boston Celtics. The small forward will sign a four-year deal of $128 million with a player option in the final year. Hayward confirmed his intent to sign in a piece he wrote for the Players' Tribune. The Cleveland Indians dropped the San Diego Padres 1-0 yesterday at Progressive Field. Corey Kluber set a club record with 10 strikeouts in eight innings, making him the only tribe pitcher to strike out 10 or more batters in five consecutive games. However, the offense couldn't give him the support he needed, so he took the loss, making him 7-3 on the season. The tribe will face the Padres again tonight in Cleveland. Trevor Bauer is on the mound for the Indians. First pitch is at 7:10. Watch that game on Sports Time Ohio. And Joey Chestnut won the annual Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest on Coney Island yesterday. Chestnut set a record by scarfing 72 dogs with buns in 10 minutes to capture his 10th mustard belt in the last 11 years. His performance was impressive, and he credits that to his training. I have to treat competitive eating like a sport. It's not just going to a buffet. I'm not a buffet buster. I I train. I, I fast. I, I really take my practices and try to figure out how to improve. Yeah, I I, I make my body work for me, and I've been really lucky with uh, how, how it's performed. This has been Monger Squiz with your Score Center update for July 5th, 2017. For all the latest news, scores, and updates, keep it locked right here on scoreonair.com. You're listening to the home of the latest sports news and updates in Columbus. Streaming live on YouTube and the worldwide TuneIn Radio app. This is scoreonair.com. scoreonair.com. What's good, Big Game James? How you feeling, D.O. Jr.? My guy, I'm super excited. High school sports is starting back, man. Man, I'm even more excited because we got this new show starting. Tell the people what we're doing, D.O. Jr. Man, we starting the Central Ohio High School Showcase, the C-O-H-S-S. That's right. We're covering football, basketball, baseball, soccer, volleyball, and track and field. If it's in season, we on it. Hey, you know we do this for the kids, man. You can listen live by going to scoreonair.com via the TuneIn app or watch us streaming live by going to the Score On Air. YouTube channel, the C O H S S, giving you nothing less, showcasing Central Ohio's best. The Be On Air Network, bringing you the best of the best in internet radio from across the country. From Miami to Denver to Chicago and Cleveland, you'll hear all the top shows from all of our college stations. For more information on the Ohio Media School, go to beonair.com. Be On Air Network, bringing you the best college radio has to offer. Are you a sports fan? Do you have a mobile phone? Great. That's all you need to stay up to date with ScoreOnAir.com, the new generation of sports talk radio, with original talk shows starting every two hours, covering every sport from every angle. From basketball. To hockey. To martial arts. To fantasy football. We cover all Ohio sports. We cover all Ohio sports. Just go to ScoreOnAir.com or download the TuneIn Radio app and search ScoreOnAir. You'll be part of the action in no time. Whether you're stuck in traffic, at the grocery store, studying at the library, anywhere for that matter. Anywhere for that matter. Tune in anytime to get your sports fix. Follow us on social media or go to ScoreOnAir.com for even more original content, including play-by-play of local high school and college games, sports articles, and podcasts. ScoreOnAir.com is your home for the best analysis, coverage and lukewarm sports takes the best part we're broadcasting live right here in columbus oh wait oh yo score on the new generation of sports talk radio the score Are you someone who has always dreamed of a career in sports media? The Ohio Media School now offers a six-month sports emphasis program to prepare you for a whole new career. Whether it's radio or television, play-by-play or production, the Ohio Media School has you covered. You will receive training from professionals that are actually in the industry. The Ohio Media School will get you where you need to be for a successful career in this exciting, expanding field. To schedule a visit, call 614-655-5250 or go to beonair.com. Stop dreaming about a career in sports and make it a reality at the Ohio Media School. 
Are you a sports fan? Do you have a mobile phone? Great. That's all you need to stay up to date with ScoreOnAir.com, the new generation of sports talk radio, with original talk shows starting every two hours, covering every sport from every angle. From basketball. To hockey. To martial arts. We cover all Ohio sports. We cover all Ohio sports. Just go to scoreonair.com or download the TuneIn Radio app and search Score On Air. You'll be part of the action in no time. Whether you're stuck in traffic, at the grocery store, studying at the library, anywhere for that matter, anywhere for that matter, tune in anytime to get your sports fix. Follow us on social media or go to scoreonair.com for even more original content, including play by play of local high school and college games, sports articles, and podcasts. Scoreonair.com is your home for the best analysis, coverage, and lukewarm sports takes. The best part, we're broadcasting live right here in Columbus. Oh, wait. I-O. Scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio. The score. The score. We back here at Team in the AM. I'm your boy Tori. I put the T in the TM. It's what you guys have been all. That's what you all been waiting for, really. NBA free agency. But before we can talk about who's been signed, let's talk about who's been traded. So, Paul George. We all know that the rumors have been circulating. Uh, he wants to go to LA. In 2018, he's gonna go to the Lakers. That's where he wants to be. Boston wants him. Cleveland wants him. L.A. wants him. But guys didn't keep an eye on this team. OKC Thunder trade Victor Oladipo, DeMontis Sabonis for Paul George. The Pacers president said no to Kevin Love and said no to three first-round picks from the Celtics. So basically what Sam Presti, Sam Presti's a genius. He this, this solidified him as one of the best GMs in the league for me. Last year in the draft, Sam Presti drafted DeMontis Sabonis. He got that pick for DeMontis Sabonis by taking Serge ba- by trading Serge Ibaka to the Magic for the 11th overall pick. And that 11th overall pick being DeMontis Sabonis. So basically Oh, it was for DeMontis Sabonis and Oladipo. So he basically turned Serge Ibaka into Paul George. So, and it's crazy about the entire deal is that Paul, like with trading Oladipo and Sabonis, you save money. Paul George was making about 18, 19 million, and Oladipo was making 21 for the next four, three years, and Sabonis was making at least 3 million or 2 million because of his rookie deal. So you save about five or six mil in your cap. So that, in my opinion, if you want to make get another free agent, you're going to have to pick between Steven Adams or Enos Kanter because I know next year Enos Kanter is a free agent, I don't, and there's no promises if he comes back. So I don't know if you want to get what you can for him or not, but potentially you might want to think about that. But now uh, every free agent deal, we're going to talk about every free agent deal that's been going on right now. Um, <clears throat> so here's the first one I see on the list. Ron Baker, he goes back to New York for one year. doesn't really say the amount. But the Cavs finally made a move. Um, the Cavs acquired a uh, veteran. And I, when I say veteran, I mean veteran point guard, Jose Calderon, from um, free agency. They, get him, they steal him from the Atlanta Hawks for the veterans minimum. Uh, so I base I think in my opinion that means Darren Williams is out because they didn't really like how he performed. But Jose, he can shoot the three. We obviously know he's a wizard with um, court vision. Uh, I don't know how good he is now because all I remember was his really bad days in New York. I didn't see how he performed in Atlanta because you know didn't care. But I'm gonna have to start paying attention to him. Uh, Vince Carter, it's crazy how he's still getting paid at such an at such an old age, well, not he's not old, but in the NBA, he's technically old. But he gets signed to a one-year, eight million dollar deal to go to the Kings. Uh, the Kings, well, I I don't know. The Kings they sh- signed all these young dudes, and then they dra- and then they um no they drafted all these young guys, and then 
they go out and get all these vets to teach them the ways, I guess. I don't really know. But it'll be interesting to see. Michael Carter Williams signs a one year two point seven million dollar deal for the Charlotte Hornets. His last te- year team was the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls team is just falling apart in my opinion. Speaking of the Bulls, they waived Rajon Rondo and he's yet to be signed anywhere, so we could see him signing somewhere soon. But Carter Williams will hopefully see a bigger role uh backing up Kemba Walker, maybe. I think by the end of the year in um Charlotte, Malik Monk will end up starting shooting guard at some point, and Nick Batum will move back to his small forward, you know, his original position. Uh, Omri Caspi gets signed to a one-year $2.1 million deal to the Warriors, as we all know that if you remember what his days on the Kings, uh, Omri Caspi absolutely lit up Oracle Arena one night. Him and Steph were going back and forth at each other. It was absolutely crazy, but... Oh, there's another three-point shooter for the Golden State Warriors right there. Uh, Darren Collison, he got signed to a two-year, $20 million deal to go to Indiana. He will now be, I believe, he might be the point guard there now. If you think about it, they lost Jeff Teague to Minnesota, um, which we'll talk about later. Um, but I think this means that the reins have been kind of let loose on De'Aaron Fox for the Sacramento Kings, so hopefully De'Aaron will go out there and perform pretty well. Uh, I'm going to discuss these last two before we had to break a little more in depth. So, Stephen Curry gets signed to a five-year, $201 million deal. Now, that's just, that is a lot of cash, and let me just tell you exactly how much cash that is. That is $40.2 million a year. So, Steph is now the highest paid player in the league. Surpassing Mike Conley, um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. He deserves it. Uh, he is the face of their franchise. Uh, LeBron was even on Twitter saying that Steph should make 400 million for how good he is. But <clears throat> I I don't know. Like the Warriors are really screwed. Uh, they really screwed themselves with this next deal too. Like I really thought they were screwed when it came down to signing Kevin Durant. But because they signed everybody else before him, but Kevin Durant comes back for two years, fifty-three million. He returns to Golden State to repeat, try to repeat for another title. Uh, he took a huge pay cut. I'll just tell you that much. So if you take fifty-three and divide that by two, I think that's seventeen. No, hold on. Fif- oh, I'm stupid. Oh my gosh. Fifty-three divided by two. Okay, I'm just I'm struggling right now, people. It's twenty six and a half million a year. In my opinion, that's a decent pay cut from what he was making last year. He was making about thirty one, thirty two mil. Um, so it was really interesting because me and my friend were actually having discussions about this in the car one night when we had to drive somewhere really far away because we didn't know how they were gonna do it. But I guess Golden State really just doesn't care. They're dipping into their luxury tax a little bit. Um, looks like they're gonna lose Javale McGee. Because I know he has a meeting with the Kings, too. No word on if he signed or not. But, yeah, he had a meeting with the Kings, so they might lose him. They got David West back on the minimum. They brought. Uh, we'll, just talk, we'll talk about Iguodala later. We'll talk about well, Livingston signed last week, too, for about 8 point something million. I think 8.2 or 8.4. Um, but, yeah, it was really confusing for me at, at one point with how they were going to keep everybody together. But Kevin Durant, I think, will be a free agent again next year. I think they gave him that player option for the second year like they always give LeBron, so they always give it to him now. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens. I I think he's going to leave at some point. That's just me. It might just be because, oh, man, it's Kevin Durant. You're just saying that because he left OKC. But honestly, if, if they don't win this year, I wouldn't. I would not be surprised if uh, they – if he left, I that's just me. If he went to Washington, especially. But we're going to head to break here at Team in the AM. When we come back, we'll have more free agent signings for you. You're listening to Team in the AM, the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com, the score.
the new generation of sports talk radio. Here's your scoreonair.com score center update. Gordon Hayward made his decision to leave the Utah Jazz final yesterday, announcing that he will sign with the Boston Celtics. The small forward will sign a four-year deal of $128 million with a player option in the final year. Hayward confirmed his intent to sign in a piece he wrote for the Players' Tribune. The Cleveland Indians dropped the San Diego Padres 1-0 yesterday at Progressive Field. Corey Kluber set a club record with 10 strikeouts in eight innings, making him the only tribe pitcher to strike out 10 or more batters in five consecutive games. However, the offense couldn't give him the support he needed, so he took the loss, making him 7-3 and three on the season. The tribe will face the Padres again tonight in Cleveland. Trevor Bauer is on the mound for the Indians. First pitches at 7:10. Watch that game on Sports Time Ohio. And Joey Chestnut won the annual Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest on Coney Island yesterday. Chestnut set a record by scarfing 72 dogs with buns in 10 minutes to capture his 10th mustard belt in the last 11 years. His performance was impressive, and he credits that to his training. I have to treat competitive eating like a sport. It's not just going to a buffet. I'm not a buffet buster. I I train. I fast. I I really take my practices and try to figure out how to improve. Yeah, I I, I make my body work for me, and I've been really lucky with uh, how how it's performed. This has been Monger Squiz with your Score Center update for July 5th, 2017. For all the latest news, scores, and updates, keep it locked right here on ScoreOnAir.com. This is Bob McElligot, the radio voice of the Columbus Blue Jackets, and you're listening to the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com, the score. Nasty Sports Bar in Reynoldsburg is under new management. Located at 6150 East Main Street, the home for Taco Tuesday is rejuvenated and the home for great food and family fun. Nasty Sports Bar is a great place for happy hour, serving $2 domestics, $3 $3 glasses of wine, and $5 appetizers, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Call 614-864-2827 to find out the daily specials. Nasties. Great food, family fun, with a cool name. Listen to scoreonair.com for your chance to win. Every Friday, we will be giving away a prize pack, and here's how you can qualify. Send us a message with your name, phone number, email, and date of birth to our Facebook or Twitter accounts. Just search Your Score On Air, or you can call or text any of our live shows at 614-641-0674 and tell them you want to win. It's that easy. A new winner will be selected every Friday at 7 p.m. This is your home for the new generation of sports talk radio and weekly prize giveaways score on air.com the score i'm jake safranco with your sports doc minute brought to you by the ohsaa and the ohio media school now here's the sports doc dr chris stankovich does your son or daughter struggle with nerves when it comes to competing in sports if so it's important to know that this is perfectly normal in fact professional athletes struggle with the very same anxieties that your son or daughter does while competing nerves are a result largely because of cognitive appraisals and what that means is how we perceive things often dictates how our bodies will respond you might want to think of this as fight or flight in fact when i work with athletes, I ask them, do they view pressure situations as challenges or do they see them as threats? If they view them as challenges, they often gain confidence, sharpen their focus, and become even more motivated to succeed. But if they see the situation as threatening, that's when anxiety creeps in and usually compounds matters. So it's important that you look at skills that can help, including deep breathing, using imagery, and reminding your child of the importance of positive self-talk. This has been your Sports Doc Minute, brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Enrolling now, visit B on air.com. We back here at Team in the AM. I'm your boy Tori. I'm put the T in the TM. As always, if you want to call in and talk some sports with me, you can call 614 641 0674. Again, the number is 614 614- Six four one zero six seven four. So on to the next free agent. We got Cristiano Felicio signs a four-year, thirty-two million dollar deal with the Chicago Bulls to stay there. Surprisingly, someone finally wants to stay in Chicago. Weird, right? Um, proud of him. He came out on Instagram and had a really nice, heartfelt message about um getting this contract, thanking his mom for everything that she had done for him. And said that she won't ever have to work anymore. So very proud of him and um, uh, much respect to him. Uh, Danilo Gallinari 
signs a three-year, $65 million deal to join the L.A. Clippers. This just shows the rebuild that they're trying to do here. What, what's it looking like? It's going to be Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams, Danilo Gallinari, Blake Griffin, and DeAndre Jordan. It's going to be interesting because if the Clippers win this year, it's going to make Chris Paul look extremely bad because Chris Paul is such a good point guard, in my opinion. If they win without him, man, that's going to really dampen his legacy, in my opinion. But Danilo will be making $21.5 million for the next three years. I think a player options after two. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. But Langston Galloway... um. He signed Langston Galloway, former Sacramento King, as we know, he was traded in the DeMarcus Cousins trade last year. He signs a three-year, $21 million deal with the Pistons. And everyone just started realizing after this deal, man, I can get paid. Because this man got paid $7 million a year for basically doing nothing. But before we go on, speaking of the Pistons, they did make a trade. They traded Marcus Morris to the Celtics for Avery Bradley. They just bolstered their defense big time. And I feel like that put them in the playoffs right there. Along with making the Celtics, in my opinion, worse on defense. Just because they want to be better on offense. But that's we'll have to wait and see. That's a wait and see right there. Uh, the next deal, which surprised me, uh, Rudy Gay. Taking a huge pay cut, in my opinion. Because he could have made a lot more than what he's making right now. Right now, Rudy Gay will be making $8.6 million for the next two years with a player option after one. But he signed with the San Antonio Spurs. And you should know if Rudy Gay wants to win, then everybody should want to win. Because Rudy Gay is probably one of the biggest ball hogs in the league besides Nick Young. And it seems like everywhere Rudy Gay goes, they lose. Memphis, they were good, but they were never overly good. Toronto, after they traded them, they were a playoff team. Sacramento, he was just put in a really bad situation. He had DeMarcus Cousins. They never, no one, there was no leader. But Rudy Gay joins Kawhi Leonard, LaMarcus Aldridge, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, and Greg Popovich. I don't know if he'll start. It'll be interesting. They could put him at the two. But it'll be interesting to see. Uh, that's a really good piece for the Spurs, though, if they want, have, want to have a chance to beat the Warriors or the Thunder this year. Or even the Rockets at that. Uh, next deal would be Taj Gibson. Taj Gibson signs a two-year, $28 million deal, 14 a year with Minnesota. I'm telling you, man, these Minnesota Timberwolves. These Minnesota Timberwolves are going to be crazy. They are building a god squad. This is like two K my. This is like NBA 2K my GM right now. You go out and you trade for Jimmy Butler. And... You go out and sign Jeff Teague, which we'll talk about later. And then you go out and grab a nice veteran in Taj Gibson when I've been saying the entire time that they've needed a power forward. I mean, my prefer, my, I would have preferred Paul Millsap, but Taj Gibson is no slouch either. I love Taj. So their lineup for this year is going to look like Jeff Teague, Jimmy Butler, Andrew Wiggins, Taj Gibson, Carl Anthony Towns, with backups of Gorgie Jang, um, Tyus Jones, Justin Patton, uh, who else? I think Muhammad's still out there. I'm not sure, but we'll have to see. And also, keep an eye out for this guy. He signed with the Minnesota Summer League team, Jack Gibbs. He went to my high school. He was a senior when I was a freshman. Uh, he went to Davidson College, one of the best scorers in the country. He signed with the Minnesota Timberwolves Summer League team. Watch out for him. With Chris Dunn being traded... And Ricky Rubio being traded to Utah, by the way. Forgot to mention that. Ricky Rubio traded to Utah. The, Jack Gibbs has a legit chance to be on this squad as a backup to Tyus Jones. Or or backup to the backup, basically. All right, moving on. Blake Griffin re-signs a deal with the Clippers for five years, $173 million. As we all know, that the relationship with Chris Paul kind of became rocky after a little while. I don't know why. But Blake, but Blake Griffin will now be making $34.6 million a year, re-inking his deal with the Clippers. So, props to him on that. But, obviously, it feels like 
Chris Paul might have been the problem. Uh, we all know the story. Chris Paul lost trust in Doc because Doc didn't pull the trigger on the Carmelo trade. This sent his son to New York. But Chris Paul, I mean Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, you need to get better this year, and you better hope to God that you guys have a good team. I don't think you make the playoffs. If you do, it'll be a seven. It'll be a six seed or below. But you got teams like Minnesota on the come up, Sacramento on the come up, the Lakers on the come up. I'm telling you, man. You guys, I don't know if you guys will make it, but if you do, you'll be a low seed and you'll get eliminated in the first round, like always. Um, next deal, uh, I think this might be okay. I'll do a couple more deals before we hit the break. Um, Gordon Hayward. There was a report earlier in the. Let me tell you the story of Gordon Hayward, really. There was a report earlier in the day that Gordon Hayward uh, signed a four-year, $128 million deal with Miami Heat. And I was like, oh, man, Miami, what a team. Him and Whiteside, along with Deion Waiters, would be sweet. But that report turned out to be false. And then someone came out and said that Gordon Hayward is signed with the Celtics. But uh, Utah... Uh, Gordon Hayward's agent came out and said that Gordon is still thinking things over, and that kind of mulled the process there. And Utah's president of basketball operations even came out and tweeted that Gordon hasn't let them know what happened, really. So later on in the night, it did end up happening, legit. Gordon Hayward signed a 40-year, $128 million deal with the Celtics, uh, making 32 a year. He wrote a nice little piece for the Players' Tribune called Thank You, Utah. Uh, uh, players in Utah were not very happy about this. R Ricky Rubio tweeted out the crying emojis. Uh, I guarantee he wanted to play with him. Uh, and Rudy Gobert was um, singing a Chris Brown song. And if you know the words, these blanks ain't loyal. Um, kind of convenient, though. But I guarantee if you ask Rudy Gobert, he'll say otherwise. That, that has nothing to do with it. Um, but Gordon Hayward will be joining a team that now has just traded Avery Bradley. He'll be joining Isaiah Thomas, who is a free agent next year, and Al Horford. It, yeah, Al Horford's Al Horford. I hate him and his sister. But, um, yeah, so Gordon Hayward is your newest Boston Celtic. Uh, George Hill, who everybody thought was going to be in San Antonio again, the San Antonio's newest point guard, he signs with the Kings. Three years, fifty-seven million. Same contract as what Jeff T got in Minnesota. Again, we'll discuss it later. I keep mentioning him, but I just really am excited about this Timberwolves team. But George Hill will be making nineteen million. This free agent signing kind of confuses me because why on earth would you sign this guy if you just drafted your future point guard, De'Aaron Fox, who's going to be an animal? Maybe I think they might have signed him because maybe oh, George Hill will help develop his game. Because De'Aaron Fox obviously has doesn't really have a good shooting touch. But George Hill to the Kings for $19 million a year for three years. Uh, two more deals before I go. We'll talk about the Holiday Brothers. Mr. Drew Holiday, man, did he get paid. Uh, for all those years being injured, this man did get some money. Five years, $153 million. This man makes 30.6 a year now to stay in with the Pelicans. He's going to try to create something special before Anthony Davis walks. And not, trust me, he's going to want to walk. But proud of Drew Holiday. I know his, he had to deal with a lot this year with his wife battling brain cancer, and he actually did quit this year for a habit, I think about a quarter of the season to go help his wife fight the battle. Oh, so re high respect to him, and I really hope he does well. Hopefully no injury problems this year because I want to see the Pelicans contend again. Uh, where Who's next? Uh, oh, yeah, Justin Holiday, his brother. Uh, he inks a little less than – a little less than his brother did. Justin grabs about $4.5 million for the next two years to join the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls are just going young here. They really don't care. They know they're not making the playoffs. Come on, let's be honest. You really expect the Chicago Bulls to be in the playoffs – with a, with a lineup of Chris Dunn, Zach Levine, Dwayne Wade, Nikola Mirotic, and Robin Lopez? No, you don't. But we're going to head to break here. Uh, we're going to keep discussing deadline deals. There's 
there's there's still a lot more to discuss, people. Uh, you're listening to Team in the AM, the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com. The score will be right back. Broadcasting from the Score On Air studios at the Ohio Media School in Columbus, Ohio. Your home. Your home. For all the latest sports news and talk, scoreonair.com. The score. Are you a sports fan? Do you have a mobile phone? Great. That's all you need to stay up to date with scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio, with original talk shows starting every two hours, covering every sport from every angle. From basketball. To hockey. To martial arts. We cover all Ohio sports. We cover all Ohio sports. Just go to scoreonair.com or download the TuneIn Radio app and search Score On Air. You'll be part of the action in no time. Whether you're stuck in traffic, at the grocery store, studying at the library, anywhere for that matter, anywhere for that matter, tune in anytime to get your sports fix. Follow us on social media or go to scoreonair.com for even more original content, including play by play of local high school and college games, sports articles, and podcasts. Scoreonair.com is your home for the best analysis, coverage, and lukewarm sports takes. The best part, we're broadcasting live right here in Columbus. Oh, wait. I am. Scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio. The score. The score. You didn't know? NWA Midwest Championship Wrestling is looking for interns. Have you heard of Ric Flair? Well, this is the company that brought you Ric Flair before he went to the WWE. And we're looking for interns to work behind the scenes, hand in hand, with production, with audio, with video, and with podcasts and radio. Contact Damon Dury, the big dog, at 740-971-3968. The Be On Air Network, bringing you the best of the best in internet radio from across the country. From Miami to Denver to Chicago and Cleveland, you'll hear all the top shows from all of our college stations. For more information on the Ohio Media School, go to BeOnAir.com. Be On Air Network, bringing you the best college radio has to offer. Are you someone who has always dreamed of a career in sports media? The Ohio Media School now offers a six-month sports emphasis program to prepare you for a whole new career. Whether it's radio or television, play-by-play or production, the Ohio Media School has you covered. You will receive training from professionals that are actually in the industry. The Ohio Media School will get you where you need to be for a successful career in this exciting, expanding field. To schedule a visit, call 614-655-5250 or go to beonair.com. Stop dreaming about a career in sports and make it a reality at the Ohio Media School. School. The new generation of sports talk radio. Here's your score on air.com score setter update. Gordon Hayward made his decision to leave the Utah Jazz final yesterday, announcing that he will sign with the Boston Celtics. The small forward will sign a four year deal of $128 million with a player option in the final year. Hayward confirmed his intent to sign in a piece he wrote for the Players Tribune. The Cleveland Indians dropped the San Diego Padres 1 0 yesterday at Progressive Field. Corey Kluber set a club record with 10 strikeouts in eight innings, making him the only tribe pitcher to strike out 10 or more batters in five consecutive games. However, the offense couldn't give him the support he needed, so he took the loss, making him 7 and 3 on the season. The tribe will face the Padres again tonight in Cleveland. Trevor Bauer is on the mound for the Indians. First pitch is at 7:10. Watch that game on Sports Time Ohio. And Joey Chestnut won the annual Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest on Coney Island yesterday. Chestnut set a record by scarfing 72 dogs with buns in 10 minutes to capture his 10th mustard belt in the last 11 years. His performance was impressive, and he credits that to his training. I have to treat competitive eating like a sport. It's not just going to a buffet. I'm not a buffet buster. I I train. I, I fast. I, I really take my practices and try to figure out how to improve. Yeah, I I, I make my body work for me, and I, I've been really lucky with uh, how how it's performed. This has been Monger Squiz with your Score Center update for July 5th, 2017. For all the latest news, scores, and updates, keep it locked right here on ScoreOnAir.com. <laughs> You're listening to the home of heart-pounding, adrenaline-pumping sports. Broadcasting from Ohio Media School in the greatest city in the state. In the greatest state in the country. In the greatest country in the world. You're listening to ScoreOnAir.com. 
Are you a sports fan looking to expand your sports memorabilia collection? Well, First and Goal has you covered better than the Ohio State secondary. First and Goal is your number one place to find all the sports collectibles of your dreams. We are located at Polaris Fashion Place in Columbus and the mall at Fairfield Commons of Beaver Creek. Stop on in and you'll find autographed jerseys, helmets, photographs, and much more that will make you the envy of the neighborhood. Feel free to give us a call at 614-896-1016 for our store at Polaris or call us at 937-427-4737 in Beaver Creek. For all your sports collectibles and more, it's First and Gold. What's good, Big Game James? How you feeling, D.O. Jr.? My guy, I'm super excited. High school sports is starting back, man. Man, I'm even more excited because we got this new show starting. Tell the people what we doing, D.O. Jr. Man, we starting the Central Ohio High School Showcase, the C-O-H-S-S. That's right. We're covering football, basketball, baseball, soccer, volleyball, and track and field. If it's in season, we on it. Hey, you know we do this for the kids, man. You can listen live by going to scoreonair.com via the TuneIn app or watch us streaming live by going to the Score On Air YouTube channel. The C-O-H-S-S, giving you nothing less, showcasing Central Ohio's best. Matty Ice here, proud alum of the Ohio Media School. Are you looking for a new career, not just a job, but a fulfilling career? If you want to work in media, radio, television, sports broadcasting, or film and video production, you need to check out the Ohio Media School's Columbus campus today. Their updated radio and television broadcasting program will even have you ready to work in a field you'll love in just eight months. Stop by the Ohio Media School's audio and video studios today to see it for yourself. Visit BeOnAir.com. That's BeOnAir.com. You're listening to the home of heart-pounding, adrenaline-pumping sports. Broadcasting from Ohio Media School in the greatest city in the state. In the greatest state in the country. In the greatest country in the world. You're listening to ScoreOnAir.com. Welcome, 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 welcome back. We're back here at TM in the AM. I'm your boy Tori. Put the T in the TM. Where do we leave off here? We got Serge Ibaka signing a six, a three-year, $65 million deal with the Raptors to return there. Uh, I guess they got unfinished business, too, against the Cavs, because we all know that's going to work. But um, he makes about 19 a, mil, 19 a year with the Raptors now. Uh, Joe Ingles re-inks his deal with the Utah Jazz. Four years, $52 million. Uh He's definitely going to be a essential piece up to their puzzle now that Gordon Hayward is gone. Um, he'll be making 13 a year now. Amir Johnson leaves Boston to join the Philadelphia 76ers because this, team, this team's about to be hard, I'm telling you. Uh, one year, one, $11 million. Uh, James Johnson signs a four-year, $60 million deal to stay with the Miami Heat. He'll be making $15 million for the next four years. Kyle Korver stays with the Cavaliers for three years, $22 million. Uh, that's a very appropriate contract for the young, for the veteran sharpshooter, not young. He'll be making $7.3 million. Sean Livingston, he re-inks a deal with the Warriors uh, for three years, $24 million. That's $8 million a year. He, they signed him second after Steph Curry re-inked his deal. Uh, so right there, that about wraps up uh, $48.2 million right there. And then we'll talk about the other Warrior deals later. So next, it was Kyle Lowry signs a three-year $100 million deal with the Raptors to stay in Toronto. So he'll be making about 33 mil for the next three years uh, with a player option after two, of course. His stock really did go down after Philadelphia traded for the number one pick to get Fultz, and then Minnesota grabbed Jeff Teague, uh, so they didn't really need him. And San Antonio has their eye on Derrick Rose, apparently, and they had him on George Hill, too, but Derrick Rose does not belong in San Antonio, and if he goes there, I'll be livid. But... Yeah, so his stock really fell down, but Kyle Lowry uh, will have a chance to be a free agent in 2019 with all the other point guards who are going to be a free agent in 2019. But the next deal was Ben McLemore inks a two-year, $10.7 million deal with the Memphis Grizzlies. He'll be making $5.35 million a year 
Uh, ben McLemore obviously has not panned out really in the NBA. I can't remember what number pick he was. Was he wasn't fourth because that was he might have been fourth. I think he was the fourth or the sixth or the fifth overall pick in that draft, but he hasn't panned out at all. Uh, Washington Wizards, shout out to my boy Cal. Uh, he he's a huge Washington Wizards fan, but I'm not sure how he feels about this. They just signed Jody Meeks for two years, seven million dollars, three and a half a year. Jody Meeks is a good. I guess he's a good, valuable bench piece. I don't know when he played the Cavs last year against when we played Orlando. He lit us up in Cleveland a few times. Patty Mills returns to the Spurs for four years, fifty million dollars, twelve and a half million a year. Patty Mills really worked hard and played for his money, and boy, did he have a great season, in my opinion, and a great playoff run. So, props to you, Patty. You earned your money. Really proud of you. Um, <clears throat> Paul Millsap inked a three-year, $90 million deal with the Denver Nuggets. No one expected that. I thought he was going to go to Minnesota, or my friend Mike thought he was going to go to Portland. But Denver seemed like the right place to be, I guess. Paul Millsap will be joining a front court with Nikola Jokic and Wilson Chandler, who could be on the move now, in my opinion. But I like this deal for the Denver Nuggets. They, um, they're they probably going to try to trade Kenneth Fareed, too. He hasn't worked out, really. They don't really have much offense or people who can create their own shot or really good defensive guys. Um, Paul Millsap can obviously do a lot. He can work on the block. He can block shots. He can shoot threes pretty decently, as a matter of fact. But that he basically just eliminated Atlanta from playoff contention and you basically give him the give Dennis Schroeder the highest middle finger you can give him. Um Nene signs a deal that was 3 3 years 100 100 3 years 11 million dollars. Um imagine Nene making 100 plus million, but that's 3.6 million dollars a year. Uh there was some difficulty with this deal cuz the Rockets initially signed him to a 4-year 15 million dollar contract. But I guess with some of the weird terms of contracts and like players and like the rights on that you have on players, they could only sign him to a three year deal. So it kinda delayed delayed Nene's return to Houston. But overall they ended up getting it done. Uh Kelly Olenek, uh they the Celtics lifted their restricted free agency thing off of Kelly Olenek after they got Gordon Hayward, making him an unrestricted free agent, free to sign anywhere he wanted to. And Kelly Olynyk got paid. He got twelve and a half. He's going to get twelve and a half million dollars to play with the Miami Heat, and that crowded back in that crowded front court that that now carries Bam Adebayo, who I think is going to start at power forward. Bam is a monster. If you guys haven't paid attention in the summer league, he dropped twenty nine and eleven at one point, and that's more points than he scored in his entire career at Kentucky. I think is what they said. But Patrick Patterson. Signed a six uh, three year deal worth sixteen point four million dollars. Uh, he'll be making five and a half million a year. Uh, he's that's really good for the Thunder, honestly, because uh, what you needed was a big man who could shoot. Well, what, not not even that. You just needed shooting. Period. I mean, you got shooting in Paul George. You can hit threes pretty well, but adding another shooter will never hurt you. Uh, Patrick Patterson is a decent shooter, he's a decent low post guy, and he's all right defensively, nothing really to like say, oh, oh my god at, but like, yeah. Uh, this It says Chris Paul right here, but we all know what happened to Chris Paul. Um, he got traded for Beverly, Lou Williams, Sam Decker, and Montrez Harrell. Uh, he's, a, he's, some, he's a Houston Rocket now, and he'll be making $24.2 million this year, and then next year he'll have a chance to sign the Super Max. So basically the Steph Curry Max. This is one of my favorite deals right here coming up. J.J. Redick signed a one-year $23 million deal with the Philadelphia 76ers. This team will be filthy. Philadelphia and Minnesota are going to be so filthy this year. Uh, so the with the projection project, projected lineup this year for the 76ers will be Markel Fultz, J.J. Redick, Ben Simmons, Dario Saric, and Joel Embiid. This is this team's gonna be crazy with a bench of Robert Covington, Jared Bayless, and all those guys. Hollis Thompson. 
I'm really excited for this team. The process is working, and I think Joel Embiid and those guys will really have a great year, and J.J. Redick will really help bring in that veteran leadership that, that Philadelphia 76ers haven't had really since they thought they were going to get it when they signed Carl Landry. But that wraps it up for this segment. When we come back, we'll wrap up the last group of free agents. There's not that many notables here in this next column, but there's some decent players that got signed. You're listening to the team in the end, the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com, the score. We'll be right back for the last segment of the day. This is Bob McElligot, the radio voice of the Columbus Blue Jackets, and you're listening to the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com, the score. Hey guys, Matty Ice here, proud alum of the Ohio Media School. Get the training you need to get a job you will love. The Ohio Media School has classes in radio, television, sports broadcasting, and film and video production. Visit BeOnAir.com today to get started. That's BeOnAir.com. What's good, Big Game James? How you feeling, D.O. Jr.? My guy, I'm super excited. High school sports is starting back, man. Man, I'm even more excited because we got this new show starting. Tell the people what we're doing, D.O. Jr. Man, we starting the Central Ohio High School Showcase, the C-O-H-S-S. That's right. We're covering football, basketball, baseball, soccer, volleyball, and track and field. If it's in season, we on it. Hey, you know we do this for the kids, man. You can listen live by going to scoreonair.com via the TuneIn app or watch us streaming live by going to the Score On Air YouTube channel. The C-O-H-S-S. Giving you nothing less. Showcasing Central Ohio's best. I'm Jake Safranco with your Sports Doc Minute. Brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Now here's the Sports Doc, Dr. Chris Stankovich. When we think of athletes, Athletes like Derek Jeter, Kobe Bryant, or Tom Brady, often the first word that comes to mind is clutch. These are the types of athletes who seem to perform their best when the pressure is on. Did you know that clutch athletes aren't necessarily born that way? But what separates them from the competition is that clutch players are not afraid to fail. That's the biggest difference. In fact, they want the ball when the game is on the line. You know, in order to really solidify this point, you might want to go back to an old Michael Jordan commercial where he talked about not how many shots he made when the game was on the line, but how many times he missed. So it's important that we note, in order to perform our best in clutch situations, we have to want the ball in those situations, and we cannot be afraid to fail. Otherwise, we will fail in clutch situations. This has been your Sports Doc Minute, brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Enrolling now, visit beonair.com. The score wants to make you, yeah, you, a winner. Each week, scoreonair.com is giving away a prize pack that'll knock your socks off. Ouch, hey, that hurt. How? First of all, like us on Facebook, and every Monday we will pin up a post to the top of our feed, updating you on what the week's prize and contest details are. Now here, take your socks back. A winner will be selected every week at 7 p.m. Friday on our combat sports show, Tyson's Punch-Out. So give us a call or text to get qualified. This is your home for the new generation of sports talk radio and weekly prize giveaways. Here's how to qualify. Message us on Facebook at Your Score On Air or Twitter, also at Your Score On Air with your name, phone number, email, and Date of birth, or you could just simply call or text any of our live shows at 614 641 0674 and tell them you want to qualify to win t shirts, sporting memorabilia, and more. This is your home for the new generation of sports talk radio and weekly prize giveaways. Scoreonair.com. The score. Tuesdays from 12 to 2 p.m. It's the Beermonger Sports Sessions on scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio, The Score. And it's not your regular sports show. You're listening to scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio in Columbus. Online sports radio, WSOA, scoreonair.com, The Score. The score wants to make you, yeah, you, a winner. Each week, scoreonair.com is giving away a prize pack that'll knock your socks off. Broadcasting from the Score On Air studios at the Ohio Media School in Columbus, Ohio. Your home. Your home. For all the latest sports news and talk, scoreonair.com. The score. What up, what up, what up? We back here at TM and the AM. I'm your boy, Tori. I put the T in the TM. 
But we're going to finish these free agent deals off real quick. Andre Roberson, Roberson returns to the Thunder. Uh, he proves that defense can make you some money. Uh, he sucks on offense, but he's really, really good on defense. I think he made an All-NBA defensive team this year, too. Um, he th- gets $10 million a year, three years, $30 million to stay in OKC. Uh, really proud of him, especially because his offensive game is really just garbage. And, but his defense is just w- probably top five in the league. But next deal, Mike Scott, one year, $1.7 million to be in with the Wizards. Uh, sorry, Cal. But Mike Scott is not what you need. Uh, Tony Snell. Four years, $46 million to stay in Milwaukee. Yeah, I did not, I wasn't, I didn't stutter on that. Tony Snell, who's going to be making $11.5 million this year in the next three years after this. Believe that. Uh, next deal, Jeff Teague, man. Jeff Teague. He's going to be making 19 a year with the Minnesota Timberwolves. I cannot wait. Minnesota is going to be so filthy. They just need to get a better bench, sign some vets, because I guarantee some vets are paying attention. Like, ooh, this team's on the come up. Might want to pay attention to them. Might want to be with them. Taj Gibson did it. Why not follow in his footsteps? Um, This guy from Greece, Milos Teodosic, signed a two-year, $12.3 million deal with the Clippers. And I just read this funny story about it on SportsCenter's Twitter before we actually started the segment. Um... So Patrick Beverly, a couple years like back in 2010, used to play with Milos Teodosic, and whenever he would check into hotels, he would use Milos's name. So Patrick Beverly said that whenever him and Milos were on a road trip or something, he would use his name, which is I think it's hilarious and. He also said that Milos might be the best passer in the NBA right now, which is saying something for a kid who literally just came over to play. So it'll be interesting to watch. I'm going to have to keep an eye on this Milos guy. Uh, David Theus from the European League, he signs a two-year deal with the Boston Celtics. Uh, Don't really know the amount yet, but yeah, he's with the Celtics. Uh, P.J. Tucker. Signs a four-year, $32 million deal with the Houston Rockets. He'll be making eight a year. I really think this is a good deal for Houston because they need a defense, someone a little younger than Trevor Ariza. This is their 3 and D guy that I feel like will replace Trevor Ariza. Um, who else? Dion Waiters inked a four-year, $52 million deal with the Miami Heat to stay in Miami. As we know, Dion really played fantastically with the Heat. Last year, he'll be making $13 million for the next four years. Uh, so, King, so quote-unquote, King Dion is back. Uh, Nick Young, join, oh, sorry, David West signed for the veteran minimum, blah, 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 who cares. Um, uh, Nick Young, one year, $5.2 million to Golden State. It's really ironic that he tweeted in 2016, Golden State Warrior fans in 2016 don't know nothing about basketball. Yet here you are joining the Warriors. Um, so, yeah, it's weird. I guess Nick Young said, if I can't have my Iggy, let's go join the other Iggy in uh, Golden State. And speaking of that Iggy, he got brought back for a lot of cash. Uh, three years, $48 million, as a matter of fact. So, if I'm, my math is correct on that, let's see here. If my math is correct, that will be $16 million a year for Andre Guadalla. Luxury tax. Uh, so the Houston last deal was the Houston Rockets. It's not really a deal, more or less. It's more or less him coming over. Uh, Zochi, or Ju- Zochi, I think is what his name is. The huge seven-footer from China will be coming over this year to play for the Rockets. Uh, everyone's like, oh my god, this is the second coming of Yao Ming. Uh, slow, to, slow your roll there. We don't know nothing about this kid. We just know that he's a big guy who can play and block shots. So I can't really wait to see about that. Also not mentioned here, uh, Otto Porter did say yes to a deal to join the Brooklyn Nets for four years, $106 million. So that means, that being said, Otto Porter will be making about $26.5 million a year. Washington has until, I think, 
uh, this weekend to sign. I think he, they have till tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. To, sign, to match that deal. And also with Avery Bradley being traded, uh, there's talks about the Pistons potentially lifting up the re- the restricted ban on Contavious Caldwell Pope because Avery Bradley is th- their new um um their new guy. So that'll be interesting. Um, what else is going on here? Apparently. According to a friend of Avery Bradley, he's on a flight to Seattle and hasn't been notified of the trade yet. So, I'm not sure, but I'm going to take a wild guess that Avery is going to be pretty upset about this trade. But also on another note, Willie Reed, the former Miami Heat uh, backup big man, is a meeting with is meeting with the uh, Clippers. But that's enough of trade talks. If you guys want to know anything else, uh, there's probably going to be stuff going on after this, but. Uh, so let's summer league. If you're paying attention to that, here's some. Here's your Orlando summer league point leaders: O'Carroll White for the Heat, averaging 19 points. Then you got Dakari Johnson from Kentucky, averaging 18 for OKC. Dwight Bikes for Dallas, 17.8. Travion Graham for Charlotte, averaging 17.7. And how about Bam? Bam on a bio, averaging 17 and a half points a game. Go Bam. Uh, Eric Moreland is averaging 8.4 rebounds. Graham is averaging 8.3. Bam's averaging 8.3. Jonathan Isaac is grabbing 8. And Carl White's also grabbing 8. And then your assist leaders, you got Daniel Hamilton at 6.8. Samaj Kriston at 6. Joe Young at 5.8. Pierre Jackson at 5.8. And London Parentes at 4.8. For the Utah League, your point leader is Brian Forbes. 21.3 points per game. Second place is Markel Fultz at 20 points per game. Third is Dante Exum with 20. Fourth is Jason Tatum at 18.7. And fifth is Jalen Brown at 17.5. Rebounding leaders, Jalen Brown at 10.5. Jason Tatum at 9.7. Corey Jefferson at 7.3. Isaiah Miles at 7. And Julian Wright at 6.5. Then assist leaders, 6.3. Dante Exxon, Larry Drew the second with five, DeJounte Murray with four and a half, Timote Luawu Cabarat with four, and Donovan Mitchell three and a, three point three. I'm telling you guys, if you want to watch some, if you want to watch a stud play, look up Donovan Mitchell's summer league highlights. The kid was an animal this summer. Um, Las Vegas summer league starts tonight, I think. So it's gonna be real fun to watch that. Let me see if I can pull it up here for you Las Vegas uh where are you they just I think the other league just wrapped up Orlando and all that jazz but tonight there'll be a few games you got Toronto and the Pelicans playing tonight at six uh the Nets and the Hawks at eight the uh Rockets and Nuggets at 10 the Bucks and the Cavs at 6 30 the Clippers and the Lakers at 8:30 and the Kings and the Suns at 10:30. So if you want a chance to go out there and watch <clears throat> um uh Lonzo Ball, DeAaron Fox and Josh Jackson, your chances tonight. But if you want to watch let's see who, who who's tomorrow. If you want to watch Lori Markinen, Justin Patton, uh Jason Tatum, Lon- Jason Tatum and Lonzo will actually be going against each other tomorrow. Fultz will be going against the Warriors. Uh, Bam will be going against the Spurs. Uh, they can't. Portland will have Zach Collins going against Donovan Mitchell. So overall, it should be a fun, fun weekend for summer league. MLB, we already talked about that earlier. But that wraps it up for today's show. Really enjoyed you guys listening today. Next week, I'm sure we'll be back with the last remaining free agents getting inked to some deals. We'll see if Derrick Rose finally goes down, see if Contavious Caldwell Pope finally gets signed. There's still some decent players out there. Maybe the Cavs will grab Jamal Crawford like there's been rumored. We'll see. But you're listening to Team in the AM, the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com, the score. I'll, be, I'll see you next Friday. Broadcasting from the Score On Air studios at the Ohio Media School in Columbus, Ohio. Your home. Your home. For all the latest sports news and talk, scoreonair.com. The Score.
The Be On Air Network, bringing you the best of the best in internet radio from across the country. From Miami to Denver to Chicago and Cleveland, you'll hear all the top shows from all of our college stations. For more information on The Ohio Media School, go to BeOnAir.com. Be On Air Network, bringing you the best college radio has to offer. Are you a sports fan? Do you have a mobile phone? Great. That's all you need to stay up to date with ScoreOnAir.com, the new generation of sports talk radio, with original talk shows starting every two hours, covering every sport from every angle. From basketball. To hockey. To martial arts. We cover all Ohio sports. We cover all Ohio sports. Just go to scoreonair.com or download the TuneIn Radio app and search Score On Air. You'll be part of the action in no time. Whether you're stuck in traffic, at the grocery store, studying at the library, anywhere for that matter. Anywhere for that matter. Tune in anytime to get your sports fix. Follow us on social media or go to scoreonair.com for even more original content, including play by play of local high school and college games, sports articles, and podcasts. Scoreonair.com is your home for the best analysis, coverage, and lukewarm sports takes. The best part, we're broadcasting live right here in Columbus. Oh, wait. Oh, yo. Scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio. The score. In a small village in Romania, after the eighth grade, students desiring to attend high school must pay their own way for transportation. From the village of Mochu to Cluj to Apahida, it costs 350 American dollars per year per child for the bus ride of over one hour each way. With your help, eight Roma children will be able to accomplish something their parents and grandparents could not do. Most of their parents have not received an elementary education. This year, three boys and five girls can have that chance to attend high school. Will you help? Please make a donation of whatever you can to help these eight children get their high school education. Make your donations payable to Worthington Presbyterian Church, 773 North High Street, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. And add on the memo line, bus transportation. Your donation will make a dream become a reality. Are you someone who has always dreamed of a career in sports media? The Ohio Media School now offers a six-month sports emphasis program to prepare you for a whole new career. Whether it's radio or television, play-by-play or production, the Ohio Media School has you covered. You will receive training from professionals that are actually in the industry. The Ohio Media School will get you where you need to be for a successful career in this exciting, expanding field. To schedule a visit, call 614-655-5250 or go to beonair.com. Stop dreaming about a career in sports and make it a reality at the Ohio Media School. The new generation of sports talk radio. Here's your score on air.com score center update. Gordon Hayward made his decision to leave the Utah Jazz final yesterday, announcing that he will sign with the Boston Celtics. The small forward will sign a four-year deal of $128 million with a player option in the final year. Hayward confirmed his intent to sign in a piece he wrote for the Players' Tribune. The Cleveland Indians dropped the San Diego Padres 1-0 yesterday at Progressive Field. Corey Kluber set a club record with 10 strikeouts in eight innings, making him the only Tribe pitcher to strike out 10 or more batters in five consecutive games. However, the offense couldn't give him the support he needed, so he took the loss, making him 7-3 on the season. The Tribe will face the Padres again tonight in Cleveland. Trevor Bauer is on the mound for the Indians. First pitch is at 710. Watch that game on Sports Time Ohio. And Joey Chestnut won the annual Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest on Coney Island yesterday. Chestnut set a record by scarfing 72 dogs with buns in 10 minutes to capture his 10th mustard belt in the last 11 years. His performance was impressive, and he credits that to his training. I have to treat competitive eating like a sport. It's not just going to a buffet. I'm not a buffet buster. I, I train. I, I fast. I, I really take my practices and try to figure out how to improve. Yeah, I, I, I make my body work for me, and I, I've been really lucky with uh, how, how it's performed. This has been Monger Squiz with your Score Center update for July 5th, 2017. For all the latest news, scores, and updates, keep it locked right here on scoreonair.com. You're listening to the home of the latest sports news and updates in Columbus. Streaming live on YouTube and the worldwide tune in radio app. This is scoreonair.com. Are you a sports fan? Do you have a mobile phone? Great. That's all you need to stay up to date with scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio, with original talk shows starting every two hours, covering every sport from every angle. From basketball to hockey to martial arts. 
fantasy football. We cover all Ohio sports. We cover all Ohio sports. Just go to scoreonair.com or download the TuneIn Radio app and search Score On Air. You'll be part of the action in no time. Whether you're stuck in traffic, at the grocery store, studying at the library, anywhere for that matter. Anywhere for that matter. Tune in any time to get your sports fix. Follow us on social media or go to scoreonair.com for even more original content, including play-by-play of local high school and college games, sports articles, and podcasts. Scoreonair.com is your home for the best analysis, coverage, and lukewarm sports takes. The best part, we're broadcasting live right here in Columbus. Oh, wait. I am. Scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio. The score. The score. Do you like talking Buckeyes? Yes! Oh, my God! So do we. Just not all the time. We're home for the largest variety of sports talk. Largest variety of sports talk. This is the new generation of sports talk radio. New generation of sports talk radio. Scoreonair.com. The score. The score. The Be On Air Network, bringing you the best of the best in internet radio from across the country. From Miami to Denver to Chicago and Cleveland, you'll hear all the top shows from all of our college stations. For more information on the Ohio Media School, go to BeOnAir.com. Be On Air Network, bringing you the best college radio has to offer. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to get into SmackDown preview. This week, we actually know a lot of things coming out of SmackDown. Well, we can look forward to the uh, the the sequel, the redo of the Money in the Bank ladder match from the women. Uh, With Ellsworth banded from ringside Yeah, I imagine time. we'll still get the same result. I think that Carmella was still a good choice to have it, no matter how they got there, and I think that in the end, that's what we're seeing is that this whole Ellsworth angle was just a way for them to justify doing it again, having it on TV, and... And, and help ratings, because yeah. that will bring up ratings. Yeah, and uh, it, it certainly m- makes SmackDown more must-see this week, and they're doing a rematch between Lana and Naomi, and hopefully with the benefit of it being TV and not pay-per-view, they can keep it short. They can, you know, maybe, maybe make they, it a little tighter this time. You maybe know? whoever wins Money in the Bank cashes in. I mean, it depends I mean, on where they put this. Do you close it? I would really, I, I really wouldn't waste it if you're doing the match and the cash in on the same night. And that could be something. For if the they pay-per-view. weren't going to do it at the pay per view when the storyline almost demanded that they do, and instead chose this route, then that would be really absurd for them to have somebody cash in that night at least to me so so if you're booking this would you change the winner no i would keep it on carmella and let her hold it for a while you know I keep carmella. why don't you turn the mic toward your face yeah you got to talk into the mic i keep it with carmella and tell everybody who we're listening to if they just joined the show here oh, I'm big cast. I'm here on Fridays once in a while. but he just popped in and so this show is so addicting. We have people just walking by that want to pop into the studio. Oh yeah, it happens all the time. I mean, come on, we got a NASCAR guy here. Yeah, well, he's helped <laughs> yeah. us out before. He, you know, we he certainly... earned his racing stripes from us. I, right? I don't know, want to know about those, but <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh Naomi and Lana, like you said, I just hope it quick and easy, like a band aid. Just <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> On maybe something that will be, uh, you know, more uh, positive. What what do they do with AJ and Owens? Uh, where you know, do we see uh, American Alpha continue to play a part in this, or was that just kind of a one night thing that they used Chad Gable for because they needed an opponent? I think it's a one off thing. I think they're going to go with AJ and Owens again. Yeah, I think it would be kind of um, disappointing for them to do a so called soft relaunch of American Alpha. Just have them come back all of a sudden, and now now they're back, and there there's no. There's no emphasis put on them. There's no uh, idea that they're, uh, you know, going to be in a different spot or, you know. Especially with the tag team division right now. It's yeah. Week. Now would be a good time to put American Alpha yeah. back into it. I, I mean, hopefully they, they have a, a clever way to, uh, you know, to, to feature these guys. But, uh, again, it's, it's a, a question of their real strengths. They're entertaining in promos, but they need to be short and sweet for those guys. And they're kind of... It's kind of the same thing every time. They're just hyper jocks. With them, it's just keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, but in the ring, they're magnificent. In the ring, they're they're incredible. They're they're they manage to do 
traditional tag team wrestling in a way that really excites modern fans who didn't see that 20, 30 years ago and grow up on it like I did. Right. And lots of like other the fans. Steiner brothers. Yeah, yeah, to do the classic Southern style tag team formula. You know, yeah, because there's only two teams in WWE are doing it, the Revival <laughs> and the American Alpha. Well, and, you know, they're, we got different spin on it with DIY and everything, but um, it's the only place you are seeing it is at that level or put in that context. So American Alpha needs to be highlighted for their ring work. But uh, they, they seem to have a lot more time for the likes of Jinder Mahal. <laughs> We're not even going to get into that one. I'm going to save that. For well, I, th- with the talk of them building to this Punjabi prison thing, you know, it didn't work right the first time. The Punjabi prison. No, I think it's a, a terrible concept because it it looks bad on TV trying to film through two different bamboo cages. It's con- not unless WWE decides to maybe use a drone this time uh, around. Well, maybe, but the the rules are uh, convoluted in that you have to request a door to be open, and it's only open for like thirty seconds, and then you have, if you don't crawl out, it's closed for the rest of the match. I say we bring back a Texas death match. Well, I, I, what's wrong with just a bamboo cage match? Just have a bamboo pole cage match. It's still different, but. Yeah, it's it, not a cluster. Yeah, well, and also like they had like, like the top was like spikes, so guys couldn't climb over, and you just want to see somebody get up there by the spikes. It's natural, like they're they're, <laughs> you know, they're not. Well, it's like when WCW tried to do an electrified cage match, yeah, and you, you know, wanted, you wanted to see somebody get electrified, right? Like if you're selling that this is that this could happen, and and it turns out that it's there's no way it's going to then fans are ultimately disappointed it's kind of like when they did the inferno match ultimately you want to see someone caught on fire the, well the last time they did an inferno match the 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 so-called you know uh, the wyatt family who are supposed to be like these hypnotized you know freaks figured out how to dump a blanket on the fire <laughs> and get in anyway so it was like they you know like i mean that was ridiculous when they did bray and kane in the inferno match. that was the summer slam a few years ago then we have, we know Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin once again. Yeah. Uh, what haven't we seen from these two yet? That they're going to show us. Yeah, Tuesday. plucky baby face and arrogant bully. Yeah. Let's put the briefcase on the line, and Sami Zayn ends up getting it this time. I, I know it's a weird book, but. Well, I think Sami Zayn is one of those guys that people really are never going to give up hope on completely. You know, no matter how much he gets buried by the booking or uh, by the matches that he's he, he's such a charismatic figure and great wrestler that people will still think well maybe maybe Sami Zayn will get something out of this get he, his WrestleMania yeah he, even if he gets completely crushed by Baron Corbin which he's going to there's somehow he still ends up there's that out there's that shred good. yeah there's that shred of of uh, uh, of hope for him, and you know that's why he's such a great babyface. But it's kind of like when Zack Ryder at that one point. At, for a certain point, a lot of guys ha- have had a similar uh, a position with the fans. I think, yeah. Then we have the Hype Bros versus the Usos in non-title matchup, which the Usos. I mean, the um, the Hype Bros were the number one contenders at one point. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of things you could do. You could have. Uh, you could have the New Day interfere, give the Hype Bros a win to further the thing with the Usos. If you're trying to push the Hype Bros, then maybe that's not a good idea because they, you know, they backdoor their way into a win. As baby faces, it's never good. Uh, so you could put them over in non-title. Um, or you could have them lose and tease a breakup. You know, anybody remembers uh, Rick Martel and Tito Santana and Strike Force? Yeah. Go back and watch WrestleMania Five on your WWE Network. Only nine 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 a month. That's right. <laughs> Free fun there. <laughs> so we're gonna get ready to go to break. I, I want your guys' thoughts on this SmackDown. What do you hope is the moment of the night? It's obviously going to be the women's Money in the Bank. I think they should. I think they should close the show with that. Um, I also think. Going back to the Usos versus the Hype Bros, I kind of see in like a Money in the Bank situation where the, the Usos are getting beat up. They try to leave, and then the New Day comes back and throws them back in the ring, type of sort of thing. Just to- that's a way to get the New Day in to help, you know, help screw the Usos and still give the Hype Bros a chance to get a clean right. win. So that would be a perfect booking for that. Yeah, there. Yeah, you you solved my problem. I say the Money in the Bank. I think that should be the main event. You know, make it last a long time, though. Yeah, start it at at, at nine thirty. Yeah, and give let him a half hour. Have yeah. give him a half hour. Yeah, I look at the whole show. Do all the recaps. I think that will get the ratings. 
a little bit more higher if you have a long well good it, match if like you that. if you plug a high profile match yeah and you know uh, hype it as a main event yeah usually people stick around so maybe maybe they will if they don't stick around for the whole show though if they're not out there like huffing gas or whatever it is that they do to cause them to suddenly lose their minds when these reasonable ideas present themselves so obviously and they still go another way hey they are in uh california so they could be huffing anything out in san diego (laughs) just saying we're gonna get ready to go to break and when we come back we're gonna just uh you got the nxt house shows uh, I can pull them up and talk about that. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. We could talk. We could use this time to talk a little bit about Impact since they have their Slam anniversary yes, coming up. Slam anniversary is very much on the horizon, so we yeah, have time. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll talk some NXT and some Slam anniversary. Absolutely, sounds great. So stay tuned. You're listening to Hill and Face to go on Air dot com, part of the Be On Air Network. <laughs> This is Bob McElligot, the radio voice of the Columbus Blue Jackets, and you're listening to the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com, the score. Nasty Sports Bar in Reynoldsburg is under new management. Located at 6150 East Main Street, the home for Taco Tuesday is rejuvenated and the home for great food and family fun. Nasty Sports Bar is a great place for happy hour, serving $2 domestics, $3 $3 glasses of wine, and $5 appetizers, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Call 614-864-2827 to find out the daily specials. Nasties. Great food, family fun, with a cool name. Listen to scoreonair.com for your chance to win. Every Friday, we will be giving away a prize pack, and here's how you can qualify. Send us a message with your name, phone number, email, and date of birth to our Facebook or Twitter accounts. Just search Your Score On Air, or you can call or text any of our live shows at 614-641-0674 and tell them you want to win. It's that easy. A new winner will be selected every Friday at 7 p.m. This is your home for the new generation of sports talk radio and weekly Prize giveaways, scoreonair.com, the score. I'm Jake Safranco with your Sports Doc Minute. Brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Now here's the Sports Doc, Dr. Chris Stankovich. Does your son or daughter struggle with nerves when it comes to competing in sports? If so, it's important to know that this is perfectly normal. In fact, professional athletes struggle with the very same anxieties that your son or daughter does while competing. Nerves are a result largely because of cognitive appraisals. And what that means is how we perceive things often dictates how our bodies will respond. You might want to think of this as fight or flight. In fact, when I work with athletes, I ask them, do they view pressure situations as challenges or do they see them as threats? If they view them as challenges, they often gain confidence, sharpen their focus, and become even more motivated to succeed. But if they see the situation as threatening, that's when anxiety creeps in and usually compounds matters. So it's important that you look at skills that can help, including deep breathing, using imagery, and reminding your child of the importance of positive self-talk. This has been your Sports Doc Minute, brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Enrolling now, visit B on air.com. Are you a sports fan looking to expand your sports memorabilia collection? Well, First and Goal has you covered better than the Ohio State Secondary. First and Goal is your number one place to find all the sports collectibles of your dreams. We are located at Polaris Fashion Place in Columbus and the mall at Fairfield Commons of Beaver Creek. Stop on in and you'll find autographed jerseys, helmets, photographs, and much more that will make you the envy of the neighborhood. Feel free to give us a call at 614-896-1016 for our store at Polaris or call us at 937 937- 427 4737 and Beaver Creek. For all your sports collectibles and more, it's first and goal. Matty Ice here, proud alum of the Ohio Media School. Are you looking for a new career? Not just a job, but a fulfilling career? If you want to work in media, radio, television, sports broadcasting, or film and video production, you need to check out the Ohio Media School's Columbus campus today. Their updated radio and television broadcasting program will even have you ready to work in a field you'll love in just eight months. Stop by the Ohio Media School's audio and video studios today to see it for yourself. Visit BeOnAir.com. That's BeOnAir.com. You like talking Buckeyes? Yes! Oh my God! So do we. Just not all the time. We're home for the largest variety of sports talk. Largest variety of sports talk. This is the new generation of sports talk radio. New generation of sports talk radio. Schoolonair.com. The school. The school.
Welcome back, everybody. We're going to get into um, a semi-lightning round. We're going to talk about some Slammiversary, which is this weekend, I believe. Yeah, well, we can talk a lot about NXT because they did a big block of tapings. We don't want to give away too many spoilers, but uh, we did see the debut of Bobby Fish at these tapings, who is still on pre-taped episodes, uh, you know, of, of Ring of Honor. He, I think he's on Ring of Honor this weekend. Which is, how are they going to do that? Well, well, it depends on when these tapings play for NXT. Well, th- th- his presence will come up in a couple of weeks, but they, they had the big Bobby Roode, Roderick Strong match. They had the big Asuka, uh, Nikki Nick- Cross match. Yeah. Um, they did a, uh, an Authors of Pain heavy machinery match. So spoilers are out there if you want to spoil it. We, we uh, there's no sense in us doing that because, quite frankly, I'll forget by the time that these shows. <laughs> but I think they had uh, Atami and Ono team up in in one match. There's a lot of interesting things that are going to come out of this next month as they build to this next takeover. Uh, I think they're going to go towards Alistair Black and Ono. We can kind of figure out what the card is going to be by this point. If you if you look at it, we know that. Uh, they're you know that they're building to uh, Rude and Nakamura. I mean, not Nakamura. Rude and Drew McIntyre, which is me. going to be a great matchup. Absolutely, takeover. yeah. Uh, and it kind of sucks that uh, for Roddy Strong that he's you know he lost he, in the shuffle. Kinda. Yeah, that he has to yeah be sort of used to build up. But he it, it certainly won't hurt him. One, one loss never hurts anybody. And Roddy's a great worker. And but he's, we've seen this out of NXT. You feel like you're like. Eric Young. Yeah. He's one of those guys that he gets the other guys Well, over. I think the plan is for Sanity. I don't know if it's going to be Eric Young and Killian Day in which two, but I think the plan is for Sanity to wrestle Authors of Pain in just a mean guy tag team extravaganza. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> make... make the, don't even. I'd do that in a takeover and put it in a steel cage. Well, they they did a cage a while back, but you could do you could do a falls count anywhere or a How weapons about, uh, uh, NXT Hell in the Cell match. Well, d- d- <laughs> uh, Paul Ellering, you know, can devise some kind a of scaffolding match. There you go. <laughs> we yeah, let's let's put the four big three hundred pound dudes on a scaffold. Well. We have the technology that can brace it now. Yeah. Well, Eric Young is about 150. He'd be perfect. He'd be the perfect guy to take the bump off the scaffold. So there you go. Okay. If I, Eric I, Young, if Eric Young will take the bump off the scaffold, then book it. Book okay. it right now. I, I'm rebooking that. Never mind. I don't want Eric Young to take that big of a bump. Well, I mean, j- go back and watch Darkade '86 to see how to how. Some guys got lucky taking the bump, and other guys talking about Jim Cornette didn't get so lucky. <laughs> right. Or at least his knee didn't. His, his knee surgeon got quite lucky. But, um, yeah, NXT is going to have a pretty interesting month. You know, they've got all of this time to build to this takeover. And with Moro Ranallo, I mean, Moro started on those tapings. It's Moro, Nigel, and the ultimate third wheel in commentary, Percy Watson. So um, at least the commentary will be good. Great to have Moro back. Yes, definitely. You know, um, he did he did the Bellator deal over the weekend, which was madness as anticipated. Right. I just saw, like, read a little bit about it. It Last night's UFC card was madness. Yeah. Well, what about that? Uh, we'll leave that to Tyson's punch out, but um, talk about, you know, interesting. Hey, I think we should be able to talk about it because he talks about some WWE. Yeah, well, they well. had that, that early stoppage where, like, the guy was out. He wasn't going to get out of that hold, but the referee, but he didn't tap. There has been a problem here recently where the yeah. refs that are calling them too soon. Yeah, but it's se- some of them are letting it go too far. It seems like great booking for a rematch. You know, obviously it's UFC, but like it, it you know, if well, look at the women's match. You had a woman yeah. void her bowels in the middle of the ring. Yeah, that was something. Yeah, well, they had the <laughs> higher ranked women on the pre-show. Uh, that was for one thing. It was weird, but yes, lots of. <laughs> Lots of value to be had for your pay per view dollar, or that wasn't even pay per view. No, that was on that F- was free Fox TV. Sports yeah, one. right. The the Bellator was pay per view though. All right, so we're going to get in. We got about five minutes. Well, let's talk some impact because we ha- we have a lot of stuff to cover in our next segment anyway, so we can run through some uh, some news about the card for Impact. Now we will do a preview Friday. We will. We also have to preview the New Japan and G One on Friday. Uh, oh, yeah, we got a busy Friday. Yeah, and we won't be on Monday for 4th of July holiday, so... And we got a guest Friday. Yeah, so so we'll have the a week from this Friday, we'll have reactions from New Japan and uh, Impact and a guest and all this other stuff, so we better yeah. do this now. 
the card as it stands for now is Moose and D'Angelo Williams against Eli Drake and Chris Adonis, James Storm versus EC3 in a strap match, Davey Richards and Angelina Love against Eddie Edwards and Alicia Edwards in a full metal mayhem intergender I'm team. interested kind of in that match itself. Uh, Impact women's knockout champion Rosemary defending only the knockouts title against GFW women's champion Sienna. So it's weird that there's only one belt on the line. Uh, maybe that changes. I haven't been keeping up with their TV. Uh, Borash and Joseph Park against Josh Matthews and Scott Steiner. Yeah, because as of the 21st on their website, it's title versus title. Okay, so... Uh, They're going to merge yeah. the two. Yeah. Uh, best of three falls X Division match with Sanjay Dutt and Loki. So Sanjay Dutt just beat Loki to win the belt a couple of weeks ago on TV at least. So um, this uh, has been building up for a while. It should be really good. Uh, there's going to be, I think it's a four-way tag team match. I'm going to save the news on that until news in the next segment. But there's going to be a four-way tag team match with LAX and a few other teams. And then um, and there will be some uh, people from um, AAA, Lucha Underground, involved. Right here is two of them, Drago. Well, that's, yeah, go, go, yeah, go, go ahead then. I'll just say one, Drago. Well, no, we'll go. Uh, Drago and Elio Del Fantasma. Uh, was I couldn't say the second name, so I yeah. didn't even try. But he's, uh, <laughs> he's King Cuerno in Lucha Underground. But they're going to be in uh, a four-way match and unannounced talent from two other promotions. But, uh, that I don't have, so I won't spoil that one at yeah. least. Well, I don't have it either. But uh, <laughs> but the main event is uh, title versus title, Global Force champion uh, Alberto El Patron versus Impact champion Bobby Lashley. And a couple of notes, rumors about Del Rio and Paige supposedly breaking up and all this stuff on Twitter. It's a non-story. So it, fake news. Fake news. <laughs> so, I mean, like it was really that big of a deal anyway, but... Um, I, I bet you no one's going to watch Slammiversary and say, you know what matchup I'm waiting on? Josh Matthews and Steiner versus Borash and Pope. Probably not. Uh, it is cool that Robert Flores and Don West are going to be doing that. We talked about that on a previous show. But we um, we did hear that Mike Tanay was officially contacted and turned it down. So don't know why, uh, if he's just done with the business or didn't like the offer or felt that, you know, he was, he, he's been there and done that. Because Slammiversary, just hear me out, because I know you said he doesn't like the way that it works. Tanay and Shivani for one last time. That would have been kind of nice to hear one last time. Well, it would be. I mean, they they were good together. Uh, they weren't the most fluid. They seem to they seem to have a one upsmanship thing almost. I don't know if that was like put on for the show, but it almost seemed like Tanay was. Tony got resentful of Tanay coming up with all these facts off the top of his head. It's kind of like me and you sometimes. Sometimes because you have all the facts, and, I'm and like, you're jealous, and you're you're. I wouldn't go that far. We're we're a good partnership. Yeah. Well. Never. <laughs> Not but, in that way. But anyway, um, Lashley, uh, uh, I, uh, you're my Jade and my Silent Bob. There we go. There, we'll make this heterosexual. Well, I, I, I can't do any of my favorite quotes because they're not, fr they're not yeah. radio friendly. Maybe during the break we'll get yeah. into one. But uh, uh, nothing about Lashley turning up anytime soon for Bellator, which is kind of weird. You would think that he would have a fight. I would like to see him do a fight right now. His last fight, he dominated. Yeah, but it just doesn't seem to be one of his priorities. Uh, so how much time do we have left, James? Uh, 20 seconds. Okay, well, sounds like you've got just enough time to wrap it up then. Uh, yeah, uh, sometimes I need less than that, but that's beside the point. Uh, hey. Hey, <laughs> we'll be back after this break. We have New Japan... And all the other indie stuff. Aaron, you did a big thing over the weekend with PWA. Yeah, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about, so stick so, around. So stay tuned. You're listening to Heal and Face, ScoreOnAir.com, part of the Be On Air Network. Broadcasting from the Score On Air studios at the Ohio Media School in Columbus, Ohio. Your home. Your home. For all the latest sports news and talk, ScoreOnAir.com. The Score. Are you a sports fan? Do you have a mobile phone? Great. That's all you need to stay up to date with ScoreOnAir.com, the new generation of sports talk radio, with original talk shows starting every two hours, covering every sport from every angle. From basketball. To hockey. To martial arts. We cover all Ohio sports. We cover all Ohio sports. Just go to scoreonair.com or download the TuneIn Radio app and search Score On Air. You'll be part of the action in no time. Whether you're stuck in traffic, at the grocery store, studying at the library, 
anywhere for that matter. Anywhere for that matter. Tune in anytime to get your sports fix. Follow us on social media or go to scoreonair.com for even more original content, including play-by-play of local high school and college games, sports articles, and podcasts. Scoreonair.com is your home for the best analysis, coverage, and lukewarm sports takes. The best part, we're broadcasting live right here in Columbus. Oh, wait. I am. Scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio. The score. The score. You didn't know? NWA Midwest Championship Wrestling is looking for interns. Have you heard of Ric Flair? Well, this is the company that brought you Ric Flair before he went to the WWE. And we're looking for interns to work behind the scenes, hand in hand, with production, with audio, with video, and with podcasts and radio. Contact Damon Dury, the big dog at 740-971-3968. The Be On Air Network, bringing you the best of the best in internet radio from across the country. From Miami to Denver to Chicago and Cleveland, you'll hear all the top shows from all of our college stations. For more information on The Ohio Media School, go to beonair.com. Be On Air Network, bringing you the best college radio has to offer. Are you someone who has always dreamed of a career in sports media? The Ohio Media School now offers a six-month sports emphasis program to prepare you for a whole new career. Whether it's radio or television, play-by-play or production, the Ohio Media School has you covered. You will receive training from professionals that are actually in the industry. The Ohio Media School will get you where you need to be for a successful career in this exciting, expanding field. To schedule a visit, call 614-655-5250 or go to beonair.com. Stop dreaming about a career in sports and make it a reality at the Ohio Media Media School. The new generation of sports talk radio. Here's your score on air.com score center update. Gordon Hayward made his decision to leave the Utah Jazz final yesterday, announcing that he will sign with the Boston Celtics. Small forward will sign a four year deal of $128 million with a player option in the final year. Hayward confirmed his intent to sign in a piece he wrote for the Players Tribune. The Cleveland Indians dropped the San Diego Padres 1 0 yesterday at Progressive Field. Corey Kluber set a club record with 10 strikeouts in eight innings, making him the only tribe pitcher to strike out 10 or more batters in five consecutive games. However, the offense couldn't give him the support he needed, so he took the loss, making him 7 and 3 on the season. The tribe will face the Padres again tonight in Cleveland. Trevor Bauer is on the mound for the Indians. First pitches at 710. Watch that game on Sports Time Ohio. And Joey Chestnut won the annual Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest on Coney Island yesterday. Chestnut set a record by scarfing 72 dogs with buns in 10 minutes to capture his 10th mustard belt in the last 11 years. His performance was impressive, and he credits that to his training. I have to treat competitive eating like a sport. It's not just going to a buffet. I'm not a buffet buster. I I train. I I fast. I I really take my practices and try to figure out how to improve. Yeah, I I make my body work for me, and I've been really lucky with uh, how how it's performed. This has been Monger Squiz with your Score Center update for July 5th, 2017. For all the latest news, scores, and updates, keep it locked right here on (laughs) scoreonair.com. You're listening to the home of heart-pounding, adrenaline-pumping sports. Broadcasting from Ohio Media School in the greatest city in the state. In the greatest state in the country. In the greatest country in the world. You're listening to scoreonair.com. The truth. Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron Hurts. The truth. Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron Hurts. The truth. It is definitely the truth that I am Aaron Hurt, and we are back for hour number two of Heel and Face here from the studios of the Ohio Media School, part of ScoreOnAir.com and the Be On Air Network, your source for pro wrestling news analysis and opinions like we always do here at the top of the second hour. We're going to jump into news from around the rest of the world of pro wrestling, but before we do that, we just want to give all of you out there a quick reminder about how to find us on Facebook and on Twitter. You can just search Heal and Face 2016 on either platform to find us. You can contact us here directly at the studio at 614-641-0674. We do have a winner for this week's contest. Uh, the uh, I believe it is a commemorative photo of... Uh, uh, Oh, well, I was going to say we're not going to announce that winner. We'll save that for Friday, but I believe a winner has been selected for this week's prize package. So get in your submissions for the next prize package to be announced as James shows it to our webcam viewers. But 
that segues directly into my my next reminder about watching us on webcam from Score On Air's YouTube page or following us live on the TuneIn Radio app for your Android or Apple mobile devices or listening to archived editions of this show at mixcloud.com slash score on air. And we have a special bonus episode that we have uploaded to Mixcloud, which is, uh, as James said at the top of the show, our one year anniversary special over two hours. So even longer than a regular episode of the show here, highlighting some of our favorite interviews and conversations with people throughout the wrestling business, people like uh, Mr. Hughes, people l like Rob Conway, uh, lots of... Uh, Jocelyn, Brandon Xavier. Yeah, um, so uh, that is uh, available now for you to check out, and if you guys like what you hear, we would be more than happy to put together a part two, but we're certainly working on starting off year number two of the show on the right foot. We have, as James said uh, a, a big update about PWA to get to we're going to save our recap of the Ring of Honor Best in the World pay-per-view for most likely the next segment so we have enough time to devote to uh, analysis and, and recap so we're going to look at some other news items here such as the release of the blocks for the New Japan G1 Climax 27 huge news Huge implications of these blocks. We'll just go through it and talk a little bit about the, the uh, ramifications. Tanahashi, Makabe, Ishii, Goto, Yoshihashi, Bad Luck Fale, Nagata in his last G1, Zack Sabre, Kota Ibushi, and Tetsuya Naito are in block A. So Naito versus Tanahashi. Block A looks he, like it's Yeah, packed. Ibushi versus Sabre, Ibushi versus Goto, Zack Sabre versus Tanahashi, Zack Sabre... A, a, it's going to be great, I can't, it, but Block B is going to be even better, I think. It's not quite as stacked, but some of the matchups are a lot more compelling. Okada, Yano, Kojima, Michael Elgin, Juice Robinson, Tama Tonga, Sonata, Evil, Minoru Suzuki, and Kenny Omega. So Okada and Omega are in the same block. They will meet in round-robin action. I give it to Group B already, and I... <laughs> well, and not only that, we'll see an, uh, Okada and Suzuki again. That was incredible for the first time this year. I mean, easily one of the, the finest matches that I've, I've seen this year um, and different entirely than any match that Okada had with anybody else. So we're going to see Omega versus uh, Michael Elgin again. I, I can't, Suzuki versus Toriano is going to be the most exciting match in the world for me because Suzuki cannot torture Yano enough. I mean, it, it, it will. I don't care how long it lasts. I just want Suzuki to humiliate the big, fat, pudgy goofball. <laughs> for those that are watching on YouTube, you can physically see the excitement that this is throwing at Aaron. I mean, it's, it's getting G me ready it's for It's G1, it. man. It's going to be rad. Uh, uh, Juice Robinson and Okada. You know, Juice Robinson getting a chance to mix it up, mix it up with guys like Suzuki and Omega. Uh, you know, in it, it was, it's not where it's a throwaway match on uh, the early card of a show. It's going to be highlighted, featured, possibly main event. I mean, I assume, you know, Omega and Okada are going to headline most of the shows that they're booked on. Plus, somebody like Sonata, who is probably going to turn out to be like the, you know, the the uh, the secret MVP of the whole thing based on the way that he's been going. So, so many, so many implications. We will, of course, talk about them all as this uh, progresses. We've got a ways before we get to the G1. The USA G1 specials are upon us this weekend, so that will be our next agenda with uh, New Japan. But switching over to the NWA, another subject near and dear to both James and, and uh, our and my uh, interests. Uh, it has been uh, reported that Billy Corgan has sorted out the trademark issues with Bruce Tharp's International Wrestling Corp that were uh, holding up the transfer of trademarks and licensing from Bruce Tharp to Billy Corgan, but apparently that, uh, that has been resolved. Uh, and uh, everything uh, is is done except um, you know cash in the check. It sounds like on that deal. So we will hopefully have more news about what that means for the NWA as a national organization, what it means for its um, member uh, promotions such as NWA Midwest um, as that story continues to develop. But good to know that there's still progress and and positive progress at that. And then we're going to wrap up this segment by uh, a look at the results from Evolve. 
uh, this weekend, uh, number 86 and 87 I pay per views, both available live on Flow Slam. There was House of Hardcore action, but we maybe if we have time later, I know you had some other results you wanted to discuss too, James. So if we, we can have, always do that in seven. Yeah, so we'll perhaps pick up House of Hardcore uh, later in the show with uh, some other results. But uh, evolve on uh, Saturday night. The official results Timothy Thatcher defeated Austin Theory, ACH defeated Chris Dickinson, Thomas Sharp defeated. Uh, the mystery gatekeeper. I'm not aware of the scenario going on there. Uh, Fred Yehi defeated Jaka. Tracy Williams defeated Jason Kincaid. Keith Lee defeated Ethan Page. And Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Matt Riddle in a non title champion versus champion match. And that sounds like that card was very good, but the reports are that the second night was much better. Uh, we'll see what we have here. Tracy Williams defeated ACH. Timothy Thatcher defeated Jason Kincaid. Fred Yehi defeated Chris Dickinson. Sounds like all three of those matches were very good. Uh, evolved title match in the middle of the show. Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Jaka in a, what is reported to be a very entertaining match. Ethan Page defeated Thomas Sharp. Uh, Trent Beretta defeated Austin Theory. And the main event saw WWN champion Matt Riddle retain over Keith Lee in another uh, reportedly excellent match. So that is Evolve from this weekend, Evolve 86 and 87. As we said, we've got stuff that we can uh, talk about with uh, House of Hardcore. Uh, we've got, but we'll talk about that later because I want to pick up with um, PWA that James alluded to. We did uh, something very unique. Uh, there was a, an empty arena match that uh, got broadcast on Facebook. Uh, you can go back and check out the video of that. And we actually released a separate camera angle of the match itself without my commentary or anything, just the, the raw footage of uh, one of the cameras for that, so you can watch it. But it was definitely uh, an impromptu, uh, high-intensity situation, but it was cool to be a part of that and do something for the first time with PWA. And there's a possibility of uh, similar projects, perhaps not um, on uh, such uh, uh, tense and uh, combative terms, but maybe more showcase events from the PWA arena, um, preliminary discussions about projects like that no promises at this point but keep your eye on pwaohio.com and premier wrestling alliance on facebook and also an update about nwa midwest uh, another match was released from summer chaos the women's title defense with jocelyn and uh, jinx brandon xavier uh, uh, joining me on commentary briefly during the match but uh, that's available on nwa midwest facebook page to go with all the other stuff that's been released from that show i believe about half of the show is up so far so uh, don't forget to check out 97.5 WDIF this Thursday at 9 for the Wrestling Power Hour featuring myself with the Truth Hurts NWA Midwest Report and friends of the program Joker and the Big Dog with their off-the-mat fantasy wrestling discussion. As I said, that's 97.5 WDIF, Marion's low-power FM blue station, and you can listen live online at 975WDIF.com. So don't miss that Thursday. I believe I will have the often-promised and... Uh, thus often delayed uh, interview with uh, Michael Rothschild uh, on that broadcast this week, so uh, check that out. But uh, that's going to wrap up this segment for the most part. Anything to add, James, before we go to our break? Uh, no, stay tuned for some Ring of Honor. Yeah, that's right. So when we come back, we're going to break down uh, everything that went down at the Ring of Honor pay-per-view this weekend and talk about a couple of notes from the TV tapings the following night. So stick around for more your source for pro wrestling news, analysis, and opinions only at scoreonair.com and the Be On Air Network, the Heel and Face Show. This is Bob McElligot, the radio voice of the Columbus Blue Jackets, and you're listening to the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com, the score. Hey guys, Matty Ice here, proud alum of the Ohio Media School. Get the training you need to get a job you will love. The Ohio Media School has classes in radio, television, sports broadcasting, and film and video production. Visit BeOnAir.com today to get started. That's BeOnAir.com. What's good, big game, James? How you feeling, D.O. Jr.? My guy, I'm super excited. High school sports is starting back, man. Man, I'm even more excited because we got this new show starting. Tell the people what we're doing, D.O. Jr. Man, we starting the Central Ohio High School Showcase, the C-O-H-S-S. That's that's right. We're covering football, basketball, baseball, soccer, volleyball, and track and field. If it's in season, we on it. Hey, you know we do this for the kids, man. You can listen live by going to scoreonair.com via the TuneIn app or watch us streaming live by going to the Score On Air YouTube channel. The, the C-O-H-S-S. 
giving you nothing less, showcasing Central Ohio's best. I'm Jake Safranco with your Sports Doc Minute, brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Now here's the Sports Doc, Dr. Chris Stankovich. When we think of athletes like Derek Jeter, Kobe Bryant, or Tom Brady, often the first word that comes to mind is clutch. These are the types of athletes who seem to perform their best when the pressure is on. Did you know that clutch athletes aren't necessarily born that way? But what separates them from the competition is that clutch players are not afraid to fail. That's the biggest difference. In fact, they want the ball when the game is on the line. You know, in order to really solidify this point, you might want to go back to an old Michael Jordan commercial where he talked about not how many shots he made when the game was on the line, but how many times he missed. So it's important that we note, in order to perform our best in clutch situations, we have to want the ball in those situations, and we cannot be afraid to fail. Otherwise, we will fail in clutch situations. This has been your Sports Doc Minute, brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Enrolling now, visit beonair.com. The score wants to make you, yeah, you, a winner. Each week, scoreonair.com is giving away a prize pack that'll knock your socks off. Ouch, hey, that hurt. How? First of all, like us on Facebook, and every Monday we will pin up a post to the top of our feed, updating you on what the week's prize and contest details are. Now here, take your socks back. A winner will be selected every week at 7 p.m. Friday on our combat sports show, Tyson's Punch-Out. So give us a call or text to get qualified. This is your home for the new generation of sports talk radio and weekly prize giveaways. Here's how to qualify. Message us on Facebook at Your Score On Air or Twitter. Also, at Your Score On Air with your name, phone number, email, and Date of birth, or you could just simply call or text any of our live shows at 614 641 0674 and tell them you want to qualify to win t shirts, sporting memorabilia, and more. This is your home for the new generation of sports talk radio and weekly prize giveaways. Scoreonair.com. The score. Tuesdays from 12 to 2 p.m., it's the Beermonger Sports Sessions on scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio, The Score, and it's not your regular sports show. You're listening to scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio in Columbus. Online sports radio, WSOA, scoreonair.com, The Score. This is the Handlebar Haberdasher, Marion Fontaine, and you should be listening to The Heel and Face Show on scoreonair.com. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to jump into some Ring of Honor. They had their pay-per-view over the weekend. Uh, I saw a little bit of it, and when I saw a little bit, I did enjoy it. Yeah, I uh, caught the whole show. Uh, it was best in the world from Lowell, Massachusetts. Um a place where uh, Shawn Michaels once famously lost his smile on Monday Night Raw, but uh, uh, almost a, a full house, not quite sold out, but uh, 95%, I would say. The crowd was very uh, into uh, a lot of the show, but it opened, well, there was uh, Women of Honor action in the pre-show as uh, Chrissy Wolf from uh, Stardom and Progress teamed with Sumi Sakai uh, in Wolf's debut. Uh, for Women of Honor, and they defeated Deanna Perrazzo and Mandy Leone. As I said in a pre-show match, the show opened with El Terrible and Ultimo Guerrero defeating Matt Taven and uh, Vinny Marsalia. Uh, I had thought that this was going to be a two out of three falls match, or I believe at one point it was booked as such, but it was um, only a one fall match here, but it was r- lots of fun, and uh, uh, as I predicted, the uh, CMLL guys got the win. Uh, Ultimo Guerrero was also part of the TV tapings the following night, and we'll have some f- a few hopefully spoiler-free or at least um, mildly spoiler-free notes on that after this review here. But uh, strap match action, uh, not a, a strap match in which both men were connected by one strap, uh, but each man had a strap, and it was, so more of a country whipping match, if you will. Uh, but Kazarian defeated Adam Page. Um, I had predicted uh, Adam Page to win that one, but uh, James guessed right with Kazarian coming up. Uh, on top, they had a very brutal match. Um, Page introduced this uh, whip that had um, long nails protruding from it and a variety of thumbtacks glued to it. And Sounds like something out of a business nightmare. It was pretty grisly, and both men, you know, sliced each other's backs open with it throughout the course of the match. Uh, very intense, um, but Kazarian got the win there. Losing team must disband eight-man tag team action. Again, a one that um, I picked incorrectly. Um, although I'm not disappointed because the Rebellion lost to the team of Search and Destroy, so the Rebellion has to break up and 
good riddance and couldn't have you know uh, they were useless as the cabinet the rebellion was at least a step in the right direction but it just it was time for it to be over and so I had thought there's a possibility of maybe having Jonathan Gresham and Jay White feud with Alex Shelley and Chris Saban as heels uh, 